Okay. Now let's start with the water views after I get a little bit of water. Yes. I took a big swig and now we're rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Okay. For this first one, yeah, Toby's in chat as well. Uh, wait. What? I'm, oh. not in, I'm not in your stream right now. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. I can, I can just, uh, like, stream OBS to Discord as well. So, that, like, I can talk about stuff. Do I have the window projector? I will get it. Wait. Share screen. Window projector. And then I'll get the other ones. Four, seven, nine, two, eight. Seven, eight, one. Uh, do you want me to ping the wolf as well? Uh, you could, yeah. Because, like, theirs will be after this as well. Are we 19? right now okay uh will they be able to when i do theirs or if not that's fine uh, no hello all right i'll just ping them when i can uh, all right okay Okay, so your comp is, uh, okay, your comp's Trislosh, Sploosh, T-Tag, and Splash, so. One of the biggest questions about how you're going to approach this game is how do you deal with the ball point, and also even how do you approach the wiper, um, because it outranges all of you, but of course the more pressing one is the ball point. Um, with the wiper you can pretty much play around each other, um, play around the try, try to get the wiper to go in just a little bit too far when a teammate is um, in the vicinity to be able to take up a team fight. Um, but as far as the ball point, you either have crab, which if they inkjet, then they're using a special just for the crab. So making sure that you force them to inkjet in situations where they wouldn't normally want to could be really helpful. Um, just remember that if they inkjet, you basically have to wait it out. So any value you were going to get from the crab, you're not going to have that much with it. Um. Oh yeah, ping by um, two people. Wait, where? The team chat. Well, you okay. do not don't have been pinged, but you have been mentioned. Oh <laughs> yeah. Um. Apparently, Wolf is in in a moving uh, automobile, so they are not able to, uh... Do I keep my VODs on Twitch? I'll... Uh, Lucas, I'll... Upload them to YouTube. At some point. I don't know, I don't know quite when, but, yeah. So, I think another thing with this comp is, um... Tacticaler, so that's a big way you can lower the effectiveness of the opponent opposing inkjet. Um, you just have to be wary of uh, when they're going to be going in. Wait, what is that? Okay. So here you get pop. Okay, good team fights. You both, uh, yep. 
here they're two down you have a crab but toby i think you go in a little bit too early here before the crabs really set up um and so the ball point's not really aware that it has to be worrying about the crab yet and so you're going to go down for that here you have a crab you can just go in and they're going to jump you're getting checkpoint for this easy those strikes were very early um you had a delayed wipe you could have held them until uh they had respawns and then use it to uh push further in since you were able to move in here without the strikes anyways but now look how they're all clustered on top right if you put strikes there then that might be really helpful or if you just put them like down where they would want to drop anyways um because now there's sort of a stalemate where you can't quite get in. They also have ink jets, so it's probably best to just hold the space if you can. But yeah, Lucas is going to go down to ink jet. Everyone else backs up. Pretty good. What happens here? <laughs> there's a reason why we wanted to talk about shark spots. <laughs> yeah, if, if they're... I, the main thing with sharking is if they're going to be pushing into the area anyways, then it's not a shark. You're kind of just waiting for them to come to you. Um, uh, okay, don't forget to put coach notes and coach, coach notes, coach and coach notes. I, I will be uploading this VOD and then putting that in coach notes. I see. Okay, yeah, that makes actually more sense. Then. Yep. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So, Toby. Mm -hmm. uh, after... After you go like three down here, I went a little bit too late. So you're the weird thing here is like you're the first one to back up. Like everyone else is further forward. But then you position again in a very aggressive spot. Like this area is very open. Um the only way you can really go into the let go in for like cover is going to be closer to the enemy space so this is very aggressive to take but you're two down already because one of your teammates is just respawning you're... like right here they're going to push into this spot anyways won't they okay don't remember if they do but Toby. I'm sure that was my that was my goal there because i wanted to they do wait and then i then, yeah then I if, if you're hit once if you're going to wait What's one place you could do it that's a little bit better than this? Behind the block in mid, for example. Perfect answer. <laughs> I know my spot, I just didn't know them in that situation. Yep. Oh, okay. Yep. If, if you're going to be playing for Crab Tank, play for Crab Tank when you respawn. Like, you're halfway to it here. You're already very close to crab. One thing here is that you had a full wipe. You just have to give up left side. You might even have to give up checkpoint. The thing you don't want to happen is for this to snowball. I think if you crab from top left, that would be really helpful in this situation. Just since that creates a lot of space on left for maybe Toby to go in, maybe a, uh, try to go in. Or at the very least, to slow the opponent down. Um... But when you wipe, if you can't see where the opponent is in front of you, then it's very unsafe to go in like this. Like, you're jumping as well, um, while going into a place where you don't know if it's safe or not. And this jump is going to make it so you go in, you jump, and then you see them. You have to wait until that jump finishes before you're able to back up. And then you probably panic crab here. Even if you like died without using crab, just trying to trade the Raymaker, I think that would have been okay. It wouldn't have been great because there's you shouldn't be going in at all here. But yeah, the correct op option here is just a backup. Again, you're two down. If you don't give them checkpoint here, if you keep trying to go in like this, you're going to stagger very hard. And that's exactly what's happening here. Like here, Lucas is just... Okay, this is a score score specific thing. 
Um, but like, if they're going to have specials on you, where do you think they're going to be throwing them? First place, you throw... Okay, say... Okay, Toby, say you get first checkpoint and you have a stamp or you have a tri-strike or you have literally any special. Where are you going to aim it? Depends on the mode because if it's any... Rainmaker, class, Rainmaker Scorch. It, if, it's, if it's any mode besides Clam, top right. <laughs> yep. They... You're not... The opponent doesn't even think before they start lobbing everything they can in the top left. Hold on. Hold on. Did you just take me as an example for not thinking? Really? What? Did you just take me as an example for not thinking? No, no. I'm I'm not, not I'm not saying that. I sorry. Um You're fine. <laughs> but I'm just saying like the first place they're going to be trying to get the opponent out of is that top left area. Um furthermore if say they don't even pressure top left and they let you stay there, you're not able to drop safely at all. You are able to drop safely though if you go right side on respawn. So um keep that in mind. Where it's like, yeah, top left is like if you have it, then like you can have a long range thing there and it can pressure left checkpoint. But if you're three down, they're going to be loving everything they can at top left. The ball point's going to set up and start shooting you from under left. And you're not actually going to get any value from that position because everyone's shooting at you. You have to stay alive. So you're going to get a lot more consistent value out of like probably going right side and um, taking the mid area. And then um, from there going maybe top right and then uh, going in from right with the people dropping down from left. Maybe, maybe sending like one person top left and then everyone else going right is a pretty decent play because if you send no one top left then they're going to just react to that and say okay let's just focus mid then but so by sending someone like maybe toby top left you're giving them what they want um and then once once you're able to get control of like your checkpoint area then toby can rotate down into mid while everyone else focuses left it doesn't have to be Toby there either. It could be like Toby goes right side while uh, maybe Wolf top left. But like if you have three people top left, look at this Rainmaker. They're not even thinking. They're just immediately shooting top left. So going mid here is the correct option or top right where um where the splash is. I say before all of you rotate to top left. Because the thing is here also... If they're going to take Rainmaker here, what can you see with your crab? You can't shoot the Rainmaker. And if anything, this crab is just making space for right side, but no one is right. So I think as a team, there needs to be a bit more awareness of like when to go right instead. Because they're all on left right now. And so only now when Wolf rotates in right, now Wolf has a lot of value, can immediately drop down here and get some value. Toby had to stay top left. Even though he's the more aggressive weapon, he was in a much less aggressive position. Because top left... Oh, top left is very defensive. It's oh, like, wait. if you're there and they don't really pressure you, like, you force them to have to pressure you to move forward. But you're not able to, like, create value if you're top left. Unless you have something, like, a special that you're charging. Which, in that case, you might want um, Widow or Lucas to try to just throw bombs from top left. But overall, stay pretty safe. Because they are going to be lobbing everything they can at top left. Um, but then if you look at right side, Wolf drops down. And then with Toby, gets three for two. So, good fight. Here, Lucas is going in. Grimes is focused on Rainmaker and not looking at Lucas's fight. Okay, only now they turn around. That was late. Um, honestly, I feel like Widow picking up Zap is going to be a good option. Just because um, there's some things that, like, I feel like you could play a little more aggressively at times. Um, oh, wait. Zap would only be for when you don't have a Tri-Slash or Nouveau. Um, for, like, Tactical. Um, Here's the thing, though, like, who, like, or actually, yeah, that would be a question for Wolf then. What's like, that? 
Oh yeah. Um, you'd have to decide game to game, like if you want. Maybe even like V try and then zap. That could be something you try. But then mm. why not mob point or something? Uh, yeah, the, that's yeah. The thing always. yeah. It it depends on what you want, but I think um there are options. Um, I think the main thing that I want Widow to look at with that play is just um when your teammates are moving up, focusing on um if you can. If you can help your teammate, or if they're going in, then just rotating faster. Is Theo still in those chats, by the way? No. Just, just, oh. He's not. Uh, at the very least, like, keep your eyes so that you can see them in your in your camera, instead of, like, popping rain with your back turned to them. Toby, what's true about this map? It sucks. <laughs> No, I mean the map as in the paint right now. No paint. Yep. Why are you grabbing Rainmaker? To get it off plat. Because if I die, it doesn't matter because I have cure. Okay, but let me raise you this question. If you see when you're respawning and hear from teammates, they got everyone on plat or they're backing up. I don't think you need to grab here because they're all backing up in the mid. They've finished their advantage. So yeah, never mind them. Yep. You know, pretty sure I saw they had there were some people still. Yeah, I think at the very least, like in this comp, I feel like Widow or Lucas should be grabbing. Not who? Well, never mind. Never mind. Um, Toby should grab in some situations. I've got sploosh sploosh. Um, it just yeah. depends. But I don't think you should grab in that situation ever. Because like, you want to reset it. And also, you had so stamp. It's stamp, and I'm a sploosh. I can get it in a second. Well, that it doesn't matter whether you can get it or not. It matters whether you can throw it at this crab tank that appears on right side after you grab her in and drop down. So like now the try is pressuring you from top mid, and you're a sploosh, so you can't really do that much against it. And I'm so then, like, excuse me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, I know what you mean. Yeah, so the crab coming out also was like, you don't even have mid control yet, so it's like going to be a fight on right side. Um, with the crab and stamp on right, you just kind of have to respect it and back up. Mm -hmm. Good that you back up after that. Toby, what's the one thing you can't do when you have tactical rebuff? Jump off the map? No, shark. Come on. You, yeah, I, they... you, you want to know what, something funny that I remember from that match? Yeah. I walked it to shark and then I remembered, oh wait, I have tactical rebuff. So I was like, oh wait. <laughs> yeah. Shark. Okay, I like these specials. Yep. Good. Toby run and shoot syndrome. I'm a, I'm a shooter, you know? <laughs> well, you have swim. Toby, you're also a very short range shooter. You're like the shortest range shooter. I'm the shortest range weapon, specifically. You all wipe yeah. there. So yeah. I think. The reason why is um, you all use your specials to get control of mid, and then you tried pushing in when they respawned. Like here, you're just now going in, but they're already set up, so you kind of need to just wait here until you you're able to get another special to push in. Maybe someone trying to go top left. I should have, I should have probably instead of trying to go for the ball point, the thing that I should have done is uh, get the rest paint on right side. Yeah, getting or, like, just get behind get behind the pillar at least. Yeah, getting paint, um, playing around mid a little bit more, you have all of it painted. Remember how when they had all of mid, um, they sort of just stayed on left until they got the crab, until they got the stamp? Um, I think 
if you're able to bait them into you as well, like just playing just out of their range, so they try to move up for an aggressive poke. After they're starting to push you like that, then you can fight them. But you shouldn't be initiating the fights here. Because you don't have any uh, advantage while they have like height advantage. And they know where you are, you don't know where they are. And so then you're all clumped up on right side, they get a stamp, and yeah. If you're stuck on top right with not much to do, Wolf and Lucas, you should only have one person there. If you have both people there, one should either drop or rotate. Because, like, look at where Toby is, and... Like, there's just not much that either of you are really doing to, like, help out with that. Um... Like, in this situation, if you have Toby pushing up, yeah, there's a ball point in mid. But here you have a tri-strike coming out. So after you tri-strike, why are you not taking the space? You're still sort of playing like you need to contest it, but they've already backed up for the strike. And you're still sort of playing around this high ground, like a back line, instead of um going in to use cover, using um like the wall in mid to try to get right side control. Like, you should have been in this position a lot earlier. They shouldn't have even gone this inkjet out. Um... Also, um, I guess with that fight, remember you have a try and you have a sploosh. Um, you want to position aggressively, but if you see, sorry, uh, yeah, so here, there's still a lot of paint here. So I think you can still aggressively try to contest this space. But trying to throw a bomb while jumping into the opponent's ink is just a bit too aggressive for what your weapon needs in this comp. Um, or in this situation, specifically. Um, because, like, you still haven't really gotten the pain on right side, and if there is someone there, like the wiper, then there's a very high chance that uh, bad things will happen. Because, like, now you have to paint your feet and try to back away from it. After which, um, your aim was fine. Um, yeah, it's just like, you died there because you let the wiper get an opening on you. And then this is a win for the wiper because you had strikes and they didn't have special. Even if they would have had, they would have had a hammer, so... <laughs> right, so... Them deleting your tri-strike means that their win condition of holding the ball point at a good spot is uh, preserved. Um, so, in other words, I guess I'm saying, like, try to be in the most aggressive spot you possibly can be that's safe. If it's not safe, then contest it. Um, as in, if, it, if it's not safe to be where you are, back up, obviously. But um, if it's, like, not safe to move forward, try to mobilize it so that someone like Toby can try to poke in. Here you two down. There's still two down. You have nothing really contesting this ball point. You have no specials, isn't, and yet I both of you are moving in. Was, this is problem at some point because good ball point. Yeah, so yeah, like here I'm pretty sure, then again I'm pretty sure this was our 
first match against them, so we didn't know their plan. No, it told me it wasn't it? our first match. I don't think it was. Even if it was, ball points pretty much matter right now, so you have to know how to play around it. Especially if your comp is completely outranged by it, you have to wait for special. Toby going in like this far is the death wish. Um, holding top left is fine because like the ball points not really able to deal with you there, and you're forcing the opponent to look at left instead of right. So this is mobilizing your teammates to move forward, not when you die. So you can't go into this just yet. Wolf going under right. There was a window where the ball point could have punished you for it. Like I want to, I want to just show like from the ball point's perspective. This. I feel like there was a free kill there. Yeah, they got beta by Toby. Um, so I think you going to top left was the right play, Toby. Um, because even if you die, you have cooler. But... Wait, where was Toby at that point? Uh, yep, top left now. And now is uh, doing this somehow. Yeah, I don't know, but... <laughs> Don't ask me nothing there. But I think you're just going in a bit too quickly here. Um, yeah, no, like that, that, I you, just said that pretty much itself because it's like I should have been with Lido at that time. Like after the first, like the, yeah, I have went past the like ramp. Mm -hmm. Also, Rain shouldn't really be trying to position on the left side. It should be trying to hug like the right wall because you're you're going to have that space. Um. Or like going through a bit more mid. Like you've already okay. finished a team fight. Um and you have Toby moving in through mid. So like going left mm -hmm. means that someone like the wiper can drop down like this. I wonder as well, because I see the fizzy at the ball point, would that make them have to back up there? Yeah, like if you if you throw like bombs at them, then yes, it um forces them to like give up their position. I think after that, um I see. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure that they dropped after I threw the fizzy at them. Yeah, they they either drop or um they have to back up top right. So I think you moving in after the fizzy starts exploding is fair. I think it was still a little early, but um mm. it's fine. Yeah. Um, because like the way you positioned for the fizzy, um. Let's see. Yeah. Like, you position on this right side of the checkpoint, which leaves you exposed to the ball point. I think if you do this, like, right on, like, right behind the checkpoint instead, or, like, on the right wall, then yeah. that would be a lot safer. Um, because then you have full cover, and then they have to use fall off. Okay. Here, you're, you're using cover on the right side to... Make sure that the ball point that dropped won't be able to kill you, which is good. Really nice fall off, actually. But yeah. Um, yeah I should have not, like, hold on. I should not have went, like, after Wither died with me, I should not have went any further than what I did. Like. Okay. Good like, thing. Mm. I should have more supported. Wait, but let me. I should. Let me see. This position's fine. This is fine. Like, After you're... You were too dumb. <laughs> yeah, but it's fine, though, because everyone had cooler, if you think about it. Yeah, you had cooler, and then, um, also, like, you... In-game, in you want to be in a position that's really aggro like this. Um, because then you're preventing the opponent from pushing up into Rainmaker. Um, I think the only thing is just, like, when it starts out, you want to be a bit more conservative with how you aggress. Um, until you get, like, the opening. Um, like, once that ball point gets out of position, then that's an opening. Once you have teammates up, once you have cooler. Um, and, like, especially once you have Lucas' strikes. Lucas was playing for them. I feel like Lucas calling out play for my strikes would be very helpful there. Um, or like someone saying that you're playing for a special, be it Crab or Ink Strike. Um, I, think, I think me and Wolf can call that out. Uh, it's also something because... where like, I, I know you and Wolf are the main two people who do call out stuff like that. I kind of want Lucas to work on that a little bit just to, um one, improve his game sense. But also, um I just think there's like, 
he's the one who'll be thinking about it the most because like that's what he's yeah. contributing to the team is the part we like kind of agreed on in like in the team sense is that lucas called out how close he is to strikes and depending um how the game thing is currently or how the game is going that either me or wolf call out when he is supposed to strike which that still needs some work it's like why put you already have to think about like wolf already has to think about how to use tactical or whether you want to use it to like push up into the opponent or to hold toby you're sort of like focused on your fights you have to think about how you're holding your controller I'm, for I'm fighting a i'm a sploosh i just i don't think what do you mean Toby runs forward. No, I well, yeah, that's I know, I know what, like I know what you mean, but like yeah, like your your mental thinking. energy is taken up by like having to win those fights. If it's also having to think about how Lucas is using strikes, what is Lucas thinking about then? Uh, Lucas is thinking about strikes. The problem is Lucas doesn't know when to use them, but that can be worked on. So. Lucas is a T Tech one trick. Well, Lucas hasn't played till. till um, Lucas is for the first time in calm with This us. is fair, but, like, but I think it's something that it's a skill that needs to be developed. Um, yeah. Okay, so I think I, I think Lucas, when you're watching this VOD, a couple things. One, um, I think as far as like maybe practice it in like solo or open. Um, but I want you to like call out what you want your strikes to do every time you use them. Um, like if you want to use them to just hold a space to prevent a special from coming out, like I'm striking their crab. Um, or if you're like, I'm striking left, go in with that. Or I'm just striking to hold, don't push up. Um, even if you make wrong calls, that's progress because it's better than not making them at all. I want that to be something that you work on. I think at some point earlier on that, like, before Lucas started calling out, like, when... They were like high cost they were the strikes. They did used to call like, oh, they're gonna strike for paint or they were striking to push up. It wasn't often, but it was still slightly there that they would tell us what they were striking for. Mm. And I think it's just sort of bringing that back again. Yeah. Cause I think like. Or saying something like, Toby, if you go in, I'll strike you in. Something like that can be really helpful too. Where it's like, that's sort of what separates playing in a tournament or playing in a team environment from playing in a scrim. Where you're going to be focused on mobilizing your teammates very clearly with like communication. Um, like, if you're wanting to push them with your own strikes, that's good. Um, just say it. Um, yeah. I think... I think I've given a bit to think on for that, so. Alright. Here, 30 seconds left. You should know what to do. Defense. Yep. This is not the worst, actually. This is another position where Lucas, you're setting up on top right like a ballpoint would. You're not playing ballpoint, you're playing T-Tech. Dropping down is safe. You have teammates there. I'm feeling, would it be better, number one, would it be better if Lucas and Widow traded position in that situation? I guess Widow has grab and Lucas has a better sub, basically. I think where Widow is is fine. I think just Lucas being, like, in mid. So then, like, now you'd be backing up when the Rainmaker's shooting. But, like, they didn't even have to work to really contest this space. And so, like, they could, um, Try to go up under right side and um, pressure you there where they you can't hit them as easily, um, and like they can maybe move around like the cover and force you to have to drop on them if you want to uh, really aggress them or play how around. How long the does ledge. Toby sit in that shark? Toby, how long do you sit in that shark for? Uh, not long. I'm pretty sure. Well, it... I'm pretty sure actually a decent amount of time because I'm I think... waiting for. Yeah, this shark is fine. Like, Toby's just... like, there's not really any opportunity right now, and they have to push it to 11. So, like, the shocking here is completely fine. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I messed up something there, so, like, I will fucking die here. No, I die. 
is because of that. Like, hold on. The only reason I couldn't help you there is because, well, it's an inkjet. Yeah, but remember, what are you trying to kill with this shark? Uh, the Rainmaker, but yep. I accidentally killed the wrong person. <laughs> yeah, you killed them because here, you're wanting to go in now. Like, this yeah. is, the inkjet's just finished, you're wanting to go in. Yeah, I had, like, you want to know what I wanted to do, which kind of was greedy. I wanted to kill the ballpoint first, just to be entirely sure. I think... And that probably fucked up this thing. Yeah, one thing you could do here is, like, you don't even have to kill them. Just paint around them. Paint right side. Tell your team, go in now. Have... Okay, one thing you have to do. Tell your team, go in. Because you are going in alone. If they go in from another side, it's a pincer. If they don't, it's you feeding from another angle. Fair enough. Actually, because I they have like... cooler. <laughs> Hold on, Echo. If you remember earlier from when we played open, I don't know if I did, but I'm pretty sure I did at some point to just say when to go in. I think. Yeah, I think. I feel, I feel like it's, I should do it more. Often, it's something you but... should do more often because I don't remember the situation you're talking about. But I think. Yeah, this is something that you could hone in on when you're like trying to play sharks. Just telling a team like how they should go in, like push and right while you're going in like this. Because like here, you don't even have to try to kill Raymaker. You can just back up to their right Perfect. side and stay there. Because like yeah, just, now, just, now they know you're there. Scary yeah, now you now they know you're there. They have to look behind them. And if you get the ballpoint out of the game, having to look behind them, if you get the Raymaker out of the game by having to look behind them, then you have a pincer going. You don't have a pincer going if you get a trade. Which, to be fair, yeah, this looks like you got the trade, kill. But, to be fair, know, this I, looked like you got the Raymaker. Yeah, I, I was already saying in, the, in VC, I'm pretty sure, like, hey, I got rain. No, I got the trade. On the said ballpoint, actually. Yeah. Okay. Which, I mean, this is still a good trade. Because, like, now you have crap. They have cooler. <laughs> Okay, but can they push in with cooler into a crap? I don't think Ballpoint picked up cooler, did they? No, they did. They did. Everyone of them has cooler. If you. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Widow dies here. No, Widow does not die. No. Okay, Widow, I want to talk about this. This is. Um... Crab. Okay. You have crab now, over time. You see, Toby's going in. They get a trade. 3v3. You still have crab. They're wanting to take mid here. What's one thing you could do that would hold mid? Crab tank. Crab. <laughs> you holding this it? holding this position aggressively is fine. I don't. Yeah, but now you're seeing the wiper move up, and you put yourself in a position where it's like they can peek that ledge and chip you. Like the like... the purpose of crab tank is you're able to oh. prev. Yeah, you're able to stall, but it takes setup. Like, you're able to prevent them from even peeking that ledge once it's already revved up and you're shooting like a Hydra Splatling. Not when you're shooting like the Jet Squelcher. Um, and I think because you let the Wiper get in that far, now you have to give up that space. I think if you had Crab, you could have held this very well. And then Lucas could have dropped down with a Crab and then done something with it. Also, Lucas, you haven't dropped down at all, and like they got mid for free because it was a 3v4. When Toby was going in, Lucas, I think you should have been aware of that and tried to go in with that. I should have probably... I'm pretty sure... Did I call him I don't remember that's a problem right now. There are strikes here, but remember, they're still wanting to push in left side. Snipe's probably safer, but also you have a crap tank. So if you go in here and die, then... Or even better... Just immediately use crap for something that you could use your main weapon with anyways. Um, I think the crap positioning there was just like... A risky. It was a death wish. <laughs> like, it was a... you, you moved up and then crap before knowing where, where they were. You never want to do that. You want to, one, have a target with crab, preferably. Or just like, as I said before, like, you can just use it to hold an area that you know they're going to be pushing into anyways. Like, they have a cooler. They got a trade on Toby. And they're waiting for that cooler. Or they can't wait until it finishes. So they're going to be rushed um, in overtime. Slow them down with Crab. Get Toby to respawn. And then go in as a group. 
you don't want that wiper to poke you. You don't want to um move up and then try to crab. Maybe even losing your entire crab after they shred you and kill you. Because, like, they had a stamp ready. If they positioned better with a the Rainmaker, then I think they could have prolonged this push. But, yeah. Um, I think, as far as Lucas, um, shot call with your strikes, because that's how you mobilize your team the most as your weapon, and try to play more aggressively. Um, by aggressively, I mean, if you have paint around where you're shooting already, and you're on high ground, you can drop down into it, and then try to drop down and find a wall to play around. Um, like, playing around cover like that is very helpful. Um, alright. Next game. The fact that they pushed to 99 is, uh, that's Tower Surgeon. <sighs> uh, Echo, before you start the sync, by the way. Yep. A uh, quick question. Would yeah. you be uh, too... You, you have your sync, Echo. Would uh, it be up, up to... Would you be, uh, do a shot calling session with all four of us? Um, like you a coaching of, session like, for it, or...? Yes, like for example, all four of us play, we're gonna stream the matches to you. Obviously this would be after July, because of winter. Um, and, like, basically a live coaching session for ShotCon specifically. Uh, well, in general, I'm just thinking... I have some... Is like, I, no, I think... Let me, uh, yeah. Sorry, Echo. You're good. Just gonna focus on this. I don't think it's, I think it's more just sort of pointers on how to shot call for us, because obviously, in terms of Lucas and Widow aren't really sure about shot calling, and I think it's something that both me and Toby can improve on as well, but I think rather than hearing us shot call, just sort of give us pointers for us to work, like, sort of certain pointers for, like, us, you know, when it comes to shot calling, you know, that we can point out, okay. you know. Because it's sort of thing of, like, some of us know how to do it, but some of us also don't know really know what's included in shot calling. So basically, give like a small thing of, because I get shot calling can be very very different for people, but sort of like a general thing of what you can, what sort of expect from shot calling type mm -hmm. thing, like a very general sort of list of what to expect, you know, when it comes to shot calling, so we can sort of have an outline basically and then work from the outline yeah so uh i guess as like a bullet point of like things to consider when shot calling or when making mm -hmm. shot calls yeah um I think yeah i, I yeah. shot calling can be very different for all of us so it's sort of like what is it the is. Sort of general list yeah i think it's like not just like the players different but also like the ways you will will be shot calling will be different so like mm -hmm. um one thing that's definitely true is like specials if you're going to be using it what do you want out of it um for toby if you're like stamping in then like you're probably just using it to win a fight like that's a special you can use selfishly but if you're whale for example is a bit different whale yeah whale is saying like if you're displacing like leader and then say leaders distract leaders whale push up with that or something like that that can be really good uh, so if you have a specific target, you're hitting with it, or an area you're going into. So I guess, like, with Stamp even, like, if you're going to be trying to throw it at someone, just throwing Hammer is fine. If you get the kill, say it. Um, but then if you don't have a specific target, you definitely have an area you're trying to push already. Um, so, like, the team should know where you're pushing into, so... Okay, yeah, so, like, let's take Mako as example, or actually Sturgeon, since it's on the map. Like, hold on. Right, si right side Sturgeon. Let's say I have Hammer now, and I'm just gonna say taking first check with Hammer, or trying to take first check with Hammer. Yeah, like, I'm... Check. Yeah, or, like, I'm pushing checkpoint with it. Yep. Um... Okay, or, like, for example, taking snipe with Hammer. Yeah. Or, um... Just like, like an, uh, just on, example. Yeah, like, on this map, maybe, like, Pushing right side with whale. Where it's like, 
Yeah. Or in this scenario, Wailing Leader. <laughs> yeah. Wailing Leader starting fights on left. Something like that. So areas to control what areas you're push pushing or holding. Currently, um, when to back up as a team or give up space for opposing specials. There is a um, short calling thing. I'm pretty sure we wanted to do that at some point to like on um, Thursday practices specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, but we kind of forgot about doing it, I'm pretty sure. Like we did it once, I'm pretty sure. And then we kind of just dra uh, drowned it because we wanted to, I'm yeah. pretty sure, first get the weapons out of the way. That's fair. Now we ha now we kind of have set weapons. Yeah. Now like, I think your comps are a lot more stable now. So like Lucas has a set weapon. Obviously, Widow has kind of set weapons. Lucas has splash. Uh, are they playing ruler? I forget. Lucas is Lucas is T tech one trick basically, and Lucas is not planning on changing off of it unless yeah. probably to V shot when Wolf was going with Neo splash. Makes but sense. Uh, Lucas possible playing Zap. That too. So like it's all yeah. So Lucas T Tex shot Zap. Widow is flash, and then maybe ruler. Ruler, maybe okay. ruler. That is, that is a very maybe though. Gotcha. Depending on what I go with, like if I go with wiper, then sure. And if yeah. Lucas go near splash, then also sure. But if right. I go with splash or brush, then I'd rather not have a roller. Yeah. No. That. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. Um. It all depends and... on comes. Yeah. Yeah, we kind of narrowed our weapon pools down to three weapons, and we all are playing those weapons. Which for me, it's Sploosh, Brush, and Viper right now. None of the other weapons before, because I'm like, I'm, I'm happy with those three. I don't, Sploosh, I, I don't need to be as stubborn with Sploosh anymore. Uh, Wolf is on Triforge and Neo Splash now, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Yes, but obviously, if depending on how things go, obviously, if there is the possibility of pull point, just depends on, yeah. you know, it's obviously with the. You would trade it with Forge, so most of the time, I'm pretty sure. I would actually trade it with if. Because the thing is, if Lucas goes zap, then that means double cooler. If I go try. Because you would trade them with try them, obviously, but like also. Just... Yeah. So both one can spot in and like forge or try depending on the comp. Yeah, I feel like that's more of a thing we need to talk to with Lucas and everything though. Talk to Lucas if we Especially. are gonna put him on zap because let's not discuss it when Lucas yeah. is not here on zap. He's not here to discuss this. Yeah, just like we're talking now about like Lucas uh, being on zap and in the end Lucas doesn't want to go zap. Imagine that. So like, yeah. Let's talk about this when we're, when we're all here. Okay. I. Sorry for taking over for a second ago. <laughs> oh, no, you're good. Um, I put in. um. I put in the uh, their personal chat Um, just a couple of things to consider when making shot calls. So, like, I hope that helps Wolf with um. what exactly, or like what you asked for with. um having like some things to keep in mind with it so yeah. just yeah um just for the stream um targets with fights so saying i'm going for tetra dead now going for shot stuff like that um you might already do that where it's like fighting a weapon um or like if you're going in for a 2v2 having like a dedicated let's go for the junior first can be really helpful so then you're not shooting at two different people like, you're not taking two separate 1v1s side by side, you know? Um, uh -huh. And then areas to control, like, I'm holding right side, or I'm trying to push their snipe. Um, that information can be really helpful for, like, the tempo of your team. And then sort of going with that, but I think it's better as its own bullet point, when to back up for a team or give up space. Like, if they're all respawning or you're two down, um, then you, you're going to have to give up space for that. Um Specials or main advantage? We're two down. Yeah, I go after after the SWAT, like after the SWAT. Yeah. Uh, check the results and I'm not spoiling it for you. Okay. Um, and then specials sort of build on. Sorry. Uh, the next 
thing was like special sort of build on the idea of like what targets you're going for or what areas you're wanting to control. Like if you're using it to prevent the opponent from pushing in, like if you're crabbing so they don't push into left side, then just saying like I'm holding left with crab can be really helpful versus I'm crabbing left, let's push into it. Um, those are two very different calls. Um, and then finally game state, like if you see that you have the lead and everyone's like trying to play to push the opponent and risking death that's not necessarily the optimal play because you have lead you don't need to take big risks um that's a huge thing to for anyone to call out and then just have the team say okay we can place a lot safer here and um a bit more around like specials and if we get a pick then we can go forward and maximize what space we can take but doing so without wiping because that's um going to turn the tide for the opponent and then also like how much time's left in a game like we need to make a ball 40 seconds left or we need someone to take it's 10 seconds left um we have a lot of time just stay home if it's like three minutes and they got like pass first checkpoint or something like that on tower um or even like if you have like a push to 11 and then they're starting a snowball like just saying like give them time give them space we have a lead let's just play for specials that can be a huge call that changes the course of a game. It has a lot for me. So. Um, yeah. Let's get started with this game. Wolf going left. Everyone else in mid. Toby, that's a very aggressive poke. Especially since... I Toby. We're talking about this opening. No, no, no. We're talking about this opening. No, 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 no. Okay. Because I, I fucked up there a lot. Where are where are three places you can go that is safe from a leader on this map? Not in neutral. where I went. Not where give I me, went. Give me three different places. Uh, Right at the ramp, behind the middle thing of like yep. the ramp thing, and fight yep. club. Behind the ramp. Fight club. I, I wouldn't necessarily say that. It's... Uh, you can't eh. get leader shot from Slide. That's you, like... You can't get leader Unless shot, there. but you're also not there. really creating value there. I'd say right yeah, side, no. right side of ramp, <laughs> maybe even left ramp for like spinner if you want, or I I or tower. That, like, yeah. Hold on, so look, look at my look at my cam and realize look at me realizing wait there's a leader. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter if there's a leader on their team or not. This is too far up at the opening because this squeezer, if they would have went up up top, they then they could have just. Died. Because I had a bomb there, so like they had to back. That was my plan to get them away there, but I forgot they have a leader, so I was like, wait a minute, back it. <laughs> Fair like, enough. Right there, they had to back because of that. Yeah, um, but that... I saw the leader way too late and I was already in zoom mode. <laughs> so, like, yeah, this is uh... also exposing you to left side if they go through spinner. So, yeah. like, say the squeeze was left and this was a splash under right. Um, oh, you don't know if that's the case because it's the start of the game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, so, yeah, the leader is able to get two shots on you, and then you position yeah. where you. Yeah, I, I got, I got lucky that they missed both of those. By the way, that, like that was probably one of the worst placements I had at the start of the game. So far. Yeah. So against the leader, one thing that's very important is having specials to deal with it. I noticed well, that 15 minutes, or 15 minutes, shit, um, 15 seconds after the game starts, you still don't really have any specials here. Um, probably something for Lucas or Grimes to be prioritizing. Because um, like, if you can crab the leader instantly, or if you can get strikes on them, that can be really helpful. Because like now you have strikes from Lucas, but you're not playing for them. You sort of just happen to get them, and then you use them. So I think if they have a backline, that's something that, like, at the start of the game, you can think, okay, we can't really push into them yet. We need a special for it. Because until then, it's neutral. Um, they did give you a lot of mid for free. Um, I don't know how well y'all took that space, though. Because, like, Toby was overextended on right side. But then here, like, the opponent's not a mid at all. They're just waiting on their snipe. Like, you can take mid with that even like you can if you have someone position on their spinner that would be really nice toby what's bad about your position right now where am i even oh you're on the left with wolf uh 
Where does Tower go on this map? Right but side. <laughs> yep. I, I what, know, I'm on left side. Yeah, I'm so th this position is like, eh. It doesn't help your team that much. Um, especially if you have two people pushing it, it's like they can just rotate left and then it's a baby two. Even I'm though they have sure. a disadvantage. I don't know if either me or Wolf are a wolf going back. Yeah, Wolf, where I you reposition not. where you reposition is really good. Um I like you being on spinner. I think Yeah. Yeah. I think Here... I don't stay on spinner though, I don't think. Or I okay. do. You take a two V one. Good. And then here we get a blessed cooler that rotates. <laughs> I wonder. Wolf, what's a good position for try it if you're trying to take checkpoint? Um I'm not actually sure what I'm not sure. I'm I'm curious because you were on spinner earlier. And it was going yeah. off. So should I stay on spinner then? You could have went to their snipe. I think I did try go on their snipe. The... Actually, I think I did and it helped off though. Yeah, the only thing with their snipe is like the leader is a problem. Um, and you're playing yeah. for first checkpoint. So like you might want to just stay on spinner instead, where like you can drop down if you see someone's like being unsafe there. But you're overall kind of protected from the leader because it's a yeah. upwards angle. But I don't think like you being on right side with the crab is going to help any more than just Lucas being there, you know? Yeah. I think I was I think I was on spinner on snipe, but then I got scared of the leader because the leader looked like it was looking yeah. at me. I think if it if it does know... look at you, then that means that like, it's not able to look at uh like Toby below you. So okay. like I think you staying on like spinner is fine because it also means that none of their opponent none of your opponents can go left side because then you see them and you have mm. high ground as a tri slosher <laughs> and yeah. and they can't really position on uh their snipe or below it to try to climb up because then you're right there and you're a tri slosher you don't have to aim they do and you have high yeah. advantage as a slosher gg <laughs> i actually don't know why i hopped off spinner because i think i know i was on spinner went back on their snipe i think it's because like and you then... were on left and then you were like okay we need to move right side and then you we're on spinner first, and then that thought kind of pervaded until you just move far right. Unless I unless I was getting shot at by someone. But I don't think that's also the case. I go in here for a bad fight. I know that. You get a trade there. I don't... I think the trade's bad because you could have just held mid here. Or like, yeah. you were three down, so I think you just backing up and giving super jumps to teammates is what you need here. Like behind the ramp, maybe. Instead of um mm. this far up where the leader yeah. can shoot them. Yep. Yeah, so if you're if you're last alive, um consider giving soup jumps, like anchoring. Mm -hmm. So here how do you okay, position? Did one in code, is this thing in coach notes? I feel like you should specify counts for all. Because just, just, just in case. Yep. <laughs> for Lucas. So. There's a large amount of time here, Widow, that you were playing for crab tank. You're right under here. You you were playing for paint for like 10 seconds. And now you're trying to find a position to crab. Do you want to know where that position for crab is? Where a perfect spot is that you abandoned? Window, is it? Yep. You respawn. <laughs> you paint up for top left. Oh, wait. You don't even go top left. Oh, okay. That's the... That's the thing, because, like, look at all the paint that was on left side. Like, there's so much spawn paint that is just untaken right now. And then if you crap from far left, then, well, they kind of just have to respect that until they can get, like, someone under there to actually pressure you. But from where you are, you're now putting yourself under them. 
like right here instead of um being like a little bit higher in height versus the tower and able to hit it with a very good sight line. And also, this position on Snipe. You know how I was saying so much about how Wolf positioning on Spinner was so good? It's to prevent situations like this. <laughs> where w Widow's trying to go in with a special at mid. But hey, there's someone they already positioned on Spinner, so they can just kill them. And now you don't have Scrab for the second checkpoint. This is the definition of a snowball. Because you died once in neutral, they got a lot of control. And then you didn't play for special as a splash. And like, I think playing for special is going to mean proactively going into a spot that's good for Crab Tank. Um, and on Sturgeon, remember where Tower's pushing, because that's what you're wanting to stop with Crab. Um, they don't have an inkjet, so like, even if they do, like, you force it to come out early if you Crab it. And so that's going to be really helpful for preventing the opponent's push. Um, burning their specials early into it and then being able to go in with your own. Uh, but that won't be able to happen if you're not positioning for the crap tank. Um, it's a very powerful special, but it's not something you can just use wherever you want. You can't use it aggressively. You have to sort of use it proactively. Um, well, you can use it aggressively, but you can't use it in the middle of a fight. Um, and you can't really rely on yourself to win a fight and then crab. You have a try, you have a brush, you have weapons that are going to be creating situations for you to win fights. I don't think you going in first is the play. Because you should be playing a bit more for special. I think one thing I want you to do, Widow, is um, whenever you respawn... Say out loud if you're charging special or going in. Make that decision on the respawn button. That's, I think that would help a lot with like um, having you start playing more for where you're wanting to special. Or if you're not even wanting to, that's also a valid decision sometimes. Sometimes you go down and then respawn, but your teammates wipe the opponent. So you just want to jump in and push. You don't want to be in your spawn painting for crap. But especially for snowballs like this, you really want to be considering, okay, how do I get out of this with special? Because, like, Toby, you're not, your crab isn't just for you. It's also something that, like, helps Toby push in. It helps uh, Wolf push in. And then especially with Ink Strike. Speaking of Ink Strike, Lucas, you're making the same mistake. You're going into mid and trying to fight them instead of playing for Ink Strike. So here you're able to get a trade on tower, but does a trade really matter on tower? Not particularly. They can just get back on and continue the snowball. So I think for both of you, when you respawn, talk about that. Um, say it out loud, even if you're playing like solo queue. Um, that's also an example of a shot call. Just, I'm I'm jumping in, we don't need special yet. Um, or I'm playing for strike. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Here, you don't have specials. Toby's moving alone. Toby needs to wait for teammate specials as well. Um, but that's also another thing. Toby, if you want to move in, call out and yell at your teammates, where is my ink strike? Where is my crab? <laughs> and because, see, this crab comes out, and then now Toby's able to go in. He went too far, but the idea is there. Yeah. Um, that is also the thing. It's like I should have not. Like I, after the person jumped out, I should have. I think not tried it's to also like. The ledge. Why should you like, not have peed the ledge then? What made pre -fire, this pre-fire? Okay, pre-fire. But what would have made going in later better? The thing that's currently on screen that is blocking my death spot. Yeah, ink strike. Hey, Lucas, <laughs> if you're playing for strike. Toby knowing that there's going to be a strike soon makes him not feed, meaning you get more value out of your ink strike. Debatable. Well, it makes you feed later when the special's going out. Debatable. Toby. 
No, I know what it, it means. It lets but... you play for the option if you need to. Unless, like, you see an opportunity that's like, okay, they're out of position there. Um, so, I want Lucas and Widow especially well, yeah, just on respawn. Say out loud. If you're going to play for special or not. Not playing for it is fine. Okay. But yeah, so Toby goes down, but look at how just using those two specials already gave you so much of a control. You're all going in at the same time, and yep. Here, Wolf's going in with Cooler. Did anyone else even pick up Cooler? No. No. Wolf, where do you position Cooler? I put it on the snipe. Where's your team? I think I tried to throw it further, but then I mishit something, and I think it points back on snipe and solving. I see. Um, I think still, like, maybe even just throwing it to your team on left instead of trying to use it for yourself could have been nice. Yeah, I um, think that's originally what I was trying to do, but then I think, oh, okay. I think that's originally what I was trying to do, and then it kind of, I don't think I had the range where I hit something and it bounced off and landed on. I see. Um, I don't know what I was doing, but I... Wait. I already but have yeah, so like, then. yeah, the timing you're going in is fine. If your team goes in with me. Oh. Hold on, can you go Throw it again? out, not down. Wait, what, what do you mean? What do you mean? What did I do? Like, you throw it. Try to throw it down to your teammates. But then yeah, it oh, got caught oh, yeah. here. So I think, like, throwing it a bit more, like, horizontally might have done it. Okay. Yeah. Because I know I definitely tried to throw it over to them. But then I was kind of like, well, I... Don't know what happened. That's so hard to miss. Yeah. Yeah. So I think here trying to go in for a poke is good. What do you have right now? What I advantage had... do you have? I have technically the height advantage. I'm assuming. Yeah, or... height advantage. And you're a slaughter, so yeah. this means this means so much. You lose height advantage by going down here. This is yeah. not necessarily a bad thing because you're closing the distance. However, you are exposing yourself to multiple angles, and specifically on the left side, you need teammates to go in with you. Saying, push with me. Okay. Uh, if you want, Wolf, we can test it out and open after the VOD review. What do you yeah. mean, test what I... Uh, the short column for us both in place of trying to get each other to get attention. To each other. Okay. This, uh, so this here, Wolf, you're going in now. Lucas sees you going in and then goes in. There's this disconnect in timing. Yeah. If you say out loud, I'm going in as you drop down from snipe, if your intention is to go into like left side, then they're going to hear you. It's going to process. They'll go in at the same time as you. And that's yeah. the important okay. thing. Because, like, here, it's a 1v1. Wolf, or Lucas gets here at the fantastic timing for coaching purposes of as soon as you die, Lucas gets here now. And so it's a 1v1, and then instantly another 1v1. Yeah. So and now Lucas strike. is sort of, yeah, out of position there. But yeah, so I think one thing also is, like, I don't even know if you needed to push left side. Because remember, what is tower move? Right. Yep. So should we have one person on left and then everyone else kind of go right? Go well, left? okay. They they are push. They were pushing. So like here, you're kind of forced to bring people forward on left side. Okay. The thing is, your position on snipe, which is neither left or right, so it's fast for you to go either way. Look at all the paint you're leaving on right side. Yeah. Just like yeah, going in for this fight is. One, they have two specials. Two, they have four people there. So you're sort of going into a 1v4. So it might just be mm -hmm. a better play to like just paint up right side of mid, and then maybe try to play from there. 
Um, so then you like give a couple more options for your team as you go into mid. Because like okay. remember, Toby just died. It's a three v four. So I don't think. I think this is a little too high risk because if you go down, then they have two specials to uh do things with. Okay. I think that's another thing of like if you don't already look at it, top of the screen, the heads up display. That is the most important information you get out of the game. More important than the map, I would say. Also, if you don't okay. open your map ever, at least do it when you respawn. <laughs> but yeah, I need to learn that because I only open it on respawn most of the time. I barely check for like when I'm just having nothing else to do. Like for example, in sharking spots, I yep barely open the map. That's that's what I was going to just type in when you're sharking open map. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yes. I tend to forget that. Yeah, so, so like, like there I think... Gets me killed sometimes. Yeah. I think the reason why they're able to start a snowball here is um, they're able to get two picks on you. Toby for moving up a bit too far on left side, but which isn't necessarily bad because I think you traded it. But then Wolf goes down trying to force a fight on left side instead of just taking right. Which is like, you're taking up mid. And so, like, if if you just paint right side, even if, like, you have to back up, you're forcing a flank option. They have to look right side, which isn't where tower's moving. So you're sort of doing, like, what Toby would do of, like, you're taking a position that they wouldn't normally look at and kiting them into it. Um, If you've heard of the term kiting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh... But, like... Re refresh my memory on it real quick. I'm Kite, pretty sure it is. Kiting is like, say, say like you're fighting someone, score scores, you go bottom left, and then they chase uh, you into bottom left. So and it's basically like. Ch uh, getting chased, like being a chase bait. Yeah, baiting them into a position that's useless. Um, sorry, sorry. In my mind. Okay. Yeah. Um, or like, I'd say right, bottom right will be a better example than bottom left on Scorch. But, um, yeah, so Toby goes down, Wolf tries to force a fight, goes down as well when there's paint on right side, so they don't even need to paint anything, they're just going to get back that map control and start pushing it again. And so here the wave break comes out, the crab, they are in full advantage. How much spawn paint do you have? A lot. Yep, Lucas... Widow, look at that. Actually, Widow, how did you die earlier? That's concerning. Because, like, you respawned, right? Or, like... Oh, well, good timing, I guess. <laughs> um, Yeah, so here... Here you're two down. You squid roll forward, first of all. You are committing to this. And then here you continue painting forward you're still trying to force a fight here or you're still trying to force this position this is unsafe you're below them and you have two down like whether that was a leader whether that was a crab whether that was a squeezer whether that was a splash the fact that all of those are options that could have killed you is reason enough for you to be backing up fully. Like, when you go two down and they have all a mid, back up to top left. You had Crab King. You were at it. So, um, that's something you need to be playing for a little bit more. Good that you're painting spawn here, though. Doing what Lucas isn't. <laughs> Don't call Lucas that like that. that. The timing of that death, though, is so funny. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't mean to be laughing at the people I'm watching while coaching. It's just like, sometimes it's just like, there are these timing things, right? Where it's just like, I, as soon as I finish explaining something, it's just, bop, they die. And it's just like... It's more the timing and not at the player. Yep, also, as far as where to be looking at with your crab... What's important right now? Is bottom left important for your crab to be looking at? No. You want to be looking at tower here. Not only is it le letting the leader charge up a full shot on you to delete you, but like 
you have the range with crab to deal with tower you don't is splash so like that's what you're granting yourself with the special if you're if you use crab and then just look bottom left what are you doing that you couldn't have done with your main weapon and here it's just they have a push to one desperation everyone's just getting on so like this is sort of just like good luck pew, pop pew, off pew. i guess pew pew is basically yeah pew pew Lucas came in clutch there, though. Yeah, Lucas clutch, but also at the very end there, I think he could have um, just backed away from them and let Tower move closer to mid, forcing them to chase you instead. Um, that said, still panic, so... Lol. Honestly... Yeah, the, uh, all of us pan uh, like, everyone pan panicked there. <laughs> honestly, I think y'all are okay with pushing, so... Are you okay with just going to the next match? Yeah. After that, yeah. Because, like, I feel like y'all get a push to, like, 80. That's fine. That's something that should win you the game. I don't need to talk about that, really. Um, I'm talking uh, about a... the advantage that you lost, and then I talked about um how they snowballed. So, what should I check? Check, uh, check the placement we got. The placement we got. Oh. In the I... open. Okay. That's <laughs> okay. Scrimble for SOS. Set one. Two one. Oh, okay, so you got Mako, nice. Yes. Okay. And yeah. I hop's going to be a tough team for y'all. They got like third in SAC, so like that's yeah. That's I hop that's I hops. Yeah. I hop got I think that's pretty simple, I hope. No, yeah. they got fourth in fourth in gold bracket. Um and then they yeah. also like in Mug of War they got third, so they've been getting results recently. Um So here, what are, what are you, you were letting the brush just walk circles over you. What is happening here? So like here you just ignore the brush and then you see it again, but instead of like peeking over the ledge, you sort of just try to shark it. Remember, the brush has a lot of, like, it has a wide range. It doesn't have to aim directly at you to shoot at you. Also, like, uh, I can say this is a brush. If you shark there, you, I can, uh, like, a brush can kill you very quickly if you're that close to the ledge. Yep. Also, Widow, when you're watching this back, I want you to tell me, what do you have right now that you could use that means that you probably should be getting to an elevated spot, and maybe not below the area you want to get control of. While a Waybreaker's on it. Like here, they weren't even directly aiming at you, they were just kind of pre-firing. And they were able to kill you with Crab. So, adaptation. Um, when you have Crab, or play a bit more for Crab. That's something that I'm seeing that's a very big pattern in your gameplay. Um, when you're close to it, it feels like you're um, still trying to play around your main weapon instead of, okay, if we want to take left stack control, we can do that with a special. Um, like That's just safer than going in with just a main weapon. Because it also helps Toby out. Toby's trying to kite far left. You get two people to watch you. Okay, what happened with the blast drone, right? We don't have a look. We are VOD reviewing Toby, I think we talk about it. We definitely talk about it. Yeah. Okay. I I don't know why the cursor went further to the right, that's my bad. Um Okay. So, you took this fight on the blaster at its effective range. Um, you saw it was under right, and sort of stayed at about the range where it can hit you with AoE. You either don't take the fight at all, um, by like staying out of its range completely, and like creating a wall of paint that it can't cr push through, or you try to get as close as possible to it. Um, and there you sort of did the middle ground. Like, there, Wolf was trying to get as close as possible and traded, so. I think
think also one of... one thing to note where Lucas was. You didn't have any pain on far right side. One, you could be painting for strike there. Two, it gives you a bit more of an option in case someone rushes you a mid. So consider if that needs to be painted over the course of a game. It's also a general thing with blasters is unless it's Luna or S Blast, go as close as possible. Yep. Even with, even with S Blast, it's just better to get closer to it than to like stay at yes, the range Luna, where it hits Luna, with AoE. Yeah, but Luna and uh, S Blast both have that thing. It's like, yes, you want to aggro them, but it's harder against those two. Yeah. Also, what is what is the place that Blasters love the most? Hedges. Yep. Don't peek them. If you if you respawn and you're halfway to strikes, there's so much paint in your spawn that you can get for absolutely nothing. No risk, zero risk. Wolf, you are dropping down when you are effectively the only one alive because Toby is still doing whatever on left. <laughs> like you're 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 kiting the, their longest range weapon, which is good. Like I think you being in this position isn't bad. Mm. I think if you. If you are going to be there, though, make sure you're, like, painting up for stamp. And also, you, you even have stamp here, so I think if you, like, have a goal of, like, trying to get near the block on left, um, you could force them out a little bit better. But I think especially after you go two down with uh, first Lucas and then Wolf, you jumping out is a fair decision, um, just to, like, have a bit more presence in mid. Grimes goes top left. Green crabs, good. You get a pick with it. And then after that, you go in with that pick, and um, that stamp was unfortunate, but it just happens sometimes. Um, maybe if uh, Widow would have survived from the... Actually, what killed them in the crab? I want to look at that. Strike. Was it a strike? I don't think so. It can't be anything else at the same time. Oh, Toby. never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that that's hammer blow. Okay, I forgot. Yeah. The thing that I should have done there, instead of hammering for zone, I should have either... Like, Top left. Done, uh, done a, like... I don't. I only know it in Smash terms, in terms of, like... Um, Say it in Smash terms. It. Yeah, babysit. Or, yeah. Uh, not, yeah, I should have just... Like... Yeah, like, just hold your position. You don't need to push into them yet. You have like, yeah, not not go fully forward for the kill, but like bait, like poke. Yes. Yeah. And basically, just say, "Oh, I am. I'm gonna do it, but I'm not gonna do it actually." Yeah, like you, you can like um like a, just like move hand, forward, basically. swim forward a little, slash, and then back up. Um, mm -hmm. or just throw the hammer after the first two swings. Yeah. And also, um, as I said before, like no one's on top left right now. I wonder if that's a place Wolf could try to go, because it's elevated. And like it's a place where you can paint a lot. That said, you're getting advantage here, so never mind, never mind. So here you have zone. Toby's painting left. You have to operate. Toby, you probably want to be under the ledge. Yeah. Uh, you want to get... You have strikes. Toby, you gave that up for free. Yeah, which... I should not have had it. Okay. But I got I still got a bit of like um You go back here for the shark and perfect. You get one pick. They're using three specials here. You back up for it, not losing a single player. Lucas says to a bomb when they have tri strike. Frick. <laughs> <laughs> um Yeah, it kind of, that was also a Lucas reaction. <laughs> remember you still have the man advantage here. Yep. Which right there you have some Lucas, what should you be doing when you respawn here? <laughs> Can't think for strike. Yep. The spamming bombs on right, which is fair. But this is very forward of a position. Um I think as soon as they strike here, you shouldn't be re engaging on top right. I think just like holding uh on your own side of zone would mean that you're a lot safer. You don't have to worry about left side. 
Um, that said, what happened on left? Uh, bombs. That's all we've concerned. If you look to mid, even though they were pushing through uh, Freezer, um, so I think you got like baited by them, and then what happened with Wolf? Pretty sure Wolf just died just like. No, I'm alive. Still at strike, I think. Ross. Okay, and yeah, you're you're last alive as well. So I think like honestly, just give them zone. You're not going to recap it. See, at that point I was thinking, oh, because it all happened really quickly that everyone else was on, I didn't really attend to kind of process that, oh, let them have zone. All of us basically died at the same time, which kinda is good for us on respawn, because we were all together yeah, on respawn. It, yeah, it helps not stagger, but I think um it's still, like, if you go three down there, then, like, if they have three people all on zone, yeah, you're a junior, yeah, they have a blaster, but, like... They have three people alive that are actively shooting you. <laughs> yeah, junior count out pain. So like I I like honestly it. just say like if you're last alive run, uh is a it's a good rule of thumb. It's not applicable to every situation, obviously, but you know. Cause like it lets you keep special. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's Toby, you're stamping. You're stamping into a shooter, without pain around you. So like the shooter is able to just pre-fire you, even if you no, just outright. The, the... Yes, but look at where Tux is. Yeah, I didn't see Tux there. That's my problem. So you stamp in a mid, which is fair. I didn't just, see Tuxen, I just saw the, the other hammer and I tried to get in before, but that ended okay. up being a trade. Okay, let's say you didn't see Tux. Suppose there is a T-Tech, a Swatchers, and a Brush somewhere on the map. Where do you suppose the Squatchers is going to be? Left. Left, yeah, that's fair. Longest range, flat area. Good. I saw the brush, so I knew where the you brush You see the brush. T-Tech and uh, Dooley, I, I assume, were together. Mm -hmm. Apparently, That's a bad assumption. T-Tech can be on left, yes. It's a good aggressive spot. But top right is also really good if they're trying to just hold a spot. That said, trading stamp for stamp isn't terrible here. Um, no, because I have, like, we both it's have just, two R. It's just unsafe because, like, they could have, <laughs> yeah, they could have kept their distance and let the T Tech win or the mm -hmm. Squelchers hit you. So, no one's on left stack again. The thing is, also, I have to realize with Wiper, I am not a Squelch. If I die, that is mattering a bit more than a Squelch. Toby, I know, I know you just said it with Bomb randomly, but I wonder if, um, you could try to play for like going far left a little bit more because, like, if you're yeah, able to hold left you, stack, that's a huge position you're giving yourself. Uh, funny story, you actually gave me that advice before, but yep. Um, I Cause like, to, like, actually, if you like, I do, I did it before um, earlier when we played on Mako. I did it a bit more. Yeah, I think it's something that. Stacks, at least. Yeah, it's something that you could try to remember. Cause like, if you try to like, if you try to hold left stack and then this position on bottom right, like, you are not going to be able to hit zone from here. And you have to like swim up to a uh, zone before being able to really um like you have to expose yourself to stack before even being able to create presence in zone. So I don't think this is a great position to be in um compared to like left side, if that makes sense. It does. Okay. Because right there, I have to uh, from left side it's a downhill battle. From up, yep. uh, right side it's a Uphill battle. Yeah, if you if you go like left stack and then like try to go on the flank on left or have someone on left stack, so then they can get paint for Toby to go in far left. Then okay. Toby can circle around to their side of zone as you pincer okay. in. Uh, the best example I can give is if you go from left, you have a ramp to go up actually, and on right yep. side the best option is literally around breakfast. Which is very risky. That, that too. That too. It also takes a button roll. 
even more yep. I think Wolf jumping out in that position is good. I don't know why Toby jumped into that. Panic. I'm pretty sure I misclicked on someone during that match. I see. I don't know when the... Toby, you gotta stop dying to bombs. That's happened twice now. Um... Do, you, do you play with audio? Do you play with audio? Yes, yes I do play with audio. How often do you jump <laughs> with Viper? How often do I jump with Viper? Uh, super jump or...? Jump. Normal jump. Normal jump? Uh, do you want to make a counter for one match? <laughs> you will not be it. You will not have enough when I'm having... Wait, you just, you just sort of like yeah. sit there and appreciate the bombs like... Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Tetrangular like, form. Um, like you, you sit there and think, huh? How can this thing be e even more pointed than this? This is like the perfect you know, thing for a caltrop, and then yeah. you just die to it. You know the uh, the top, I actually rarely die to bombs when I'm jumping itself because it's like yeah. Uh, the blaster was in a really aggressive spot and ledge um, for Wolf. Oh, yeah. Widow. This is not an. Uh, yeah. I, As... I would think it would have dropped by accident. I see. I, I'm going to look at that again. Just to see. Yeah, I think would have to back because of something. Or... Maybe the blaster. Maybe the blaster. If you have to back with crab, back up away from them, not towards them. Wait, the, what, wait, the widow dropped already when they were in crab, or they were already out of crab by then? You cr yeah, if if you're going to crab them top right, just be aware that they can throw strikes there. Um and be ready to back up properly, like into top right instead of uh, bottom left. Because like now you're pretty much useless as a crab. And then Lucas is last here. Gets a strike in. You can I think you can insta cap with strike on this map. Um it is a tough uh, you... It's a tough it's timing. Very... It's tight. Uh, you have to do the... Like, hold on. I can check it, actually. Lucas, check. I think I think the position you're taking right now is, like, pretty decent. I want you to do this more. On, like, top left. Because, like... I think the thing is, like, when pushing into them, you often push in right side and didn't really take left stack. But left stack is an elevated spot compared to mid. That's a very helpful position. And then also, if you don't take far left, then well, um, they're just able to like pincer in from left stack. So. Uh, if you go in a Sassini right now, please. What is that? Go in a PB right now, if you can. A PB? Because I want to see on, on Mako if you can stick cap it. Okay, yeah. Or actually, I can just go to recall. Maybe. Look at the result signatures. So like, yeah, in, into recon, but like. It's easier when we both do it, so we can have more tries for it. Eh. That's fine. But yeah, I think, um, as far as, like, yeah, as far as, um, capping zone, um, let's see. Uh, just saw your message, Dis. Um, not gonna be able to VC for my review, but I can type in chat for a little bit of it um i think i'm going to do wolf since they're um still in chat and then i'll get to yours um smoke up yep but yeah sorry about that this i'm gonna respond to a different person real quick because i get a response for sac things hmm. what do you mean say yeah toby also, as far as openings, Lucas, this is honestly a decent one. Just like, pinning up top right. Fuck this map. Why is that? <laughs> That's a... I've done this so there. often. I've done this so it's often. So it's always been there. It, it has. It has. I've done that in so... I've done that in tourney. It is oh. so annoying. Oh. Also, this is why I wanted to do a recon because I yeah. can try both the times. Because it's like high, mid, low. Like, it, yeah, so like. Something like that. Where it's like. It just paints a lot more area of zone. Um, It's something to consider. While um, in tower, you'd probably want just like 
one on tower and then the next on tower directly and then the next on tower so it like prevents them from getting on for like 10 seconds straight i think yeah mako is a much more awkward map for that because of that <laughs> so i think you can maybe do it from left stock like below it but it's still tight but yeah um i'll definitely talk with y'all more as a team kelpies um I mean, heck, you're one of the main teams that I, like, coach consistently or, or like, talk with. So, like, we're definitely talking more. Um, but, yeah, I hope that all this helped. Um, yeah. I'm going to take a bit of a break until going back for Wolf Until going back for a uh, Wolf specifically. That's fine. Cries <laughs> a little. So what did they say? Yeah. Who's just typing? What did I do?
Okay, next we'll be going over uh, Wolf's gameplay. Uh, which is going to be... There you go. Wolf, you were playing uh, Ballpoint, right? And Minnow? No, no. Okay, um, okay. Try. Okay, try. Gotcha. Forge, I think it was. Okay. Uh, yeah, so this will be Minnow Cup, which is a... Um, it's the same skill level as Low Ink, but... Um, just one mode. So this time it was a uh, tower control. So we'll be going over two tower games and looking at those. Who were you uh, playing with, Wolf? In these? Uh, Devil, two Devil and Cody from Black Komodo, and then Cass from Legacy, I believe. Is the name. Okay. This was gonna be a quick one, by the way, because that one was very quick and hard like it was never there was not really any long games it was all very other very quick or games that like i was playing t-tech so i was like uh, i don't want to put a t-tech game in there yeah i think um tower control is very snowbally um like if you die twice then the opponent is likely going to get like a push to 20. <laughs> Welcome yeah. to. I'm going to make some more cover in my room, so. Okay. Thank you. So, Echo, don't forget to put the VOD into Coach. No, yes, I will. Is... Um, It might. I'm considering, like, just continuing the stream and then just putting all of them at once in. <laughs> so, let's see. Don't forget timestamps then. 543. Yep. Welcome. So this is an individual's review, so we're going to be doing that just from their perspective. Okay, so I guess first, there are two ways you can start on this map. Uh, left or right. Left is very defensive. Look how your ball point's immediately starting out there. Um, there's not that much aggression you can do here, because the opposing backline can set up on, like, before they drop down. Like their ball point is. So like you're not going to directly create space there. The other way you can go in is where Cody went, uh, right side. I feel like with try you might want to just start out right, because then um it opens up mid for you without you having to like peak the ball point to go in from left to mid. Um if you're able to like get above the opponent for a little bit of time, um that can give you a lot of space, maybe and let you get a kill on them if they uh position too close to mid. Um but right now you're just playing very passive with uh, fizzies, and yes, it's neutral, but also like in your comp you're one of the more aggressive pieces. So devil's with you on right. So I think you can honestly like just sort of preemptively moving back away from right side into left. So I think because of that, um, this wiper's just able to go in for free, and they or the carbon, and they almost get a kill for it. So just be aware of that, um, and like. With try specifically, you want to be thinking a little bit more like a, what I said with Lucas about like you don't want to be playing as an anchor when you're a frontline weapon, um, and you have like all of the teammates with you. You can try to make like aggressive pokes in, um, and like playing a little bit more for um, positioning yourself where the opponent might screw up. Um, so like here, it would probably be like if they do an aggressive poke on right side. Um, then if you're above them, like on the right pillar on tower here, uh, then you'd be able to punish them for that. Cooler comes out late. I think you could have waited until, uh, teammates respawn to use it, because you're not getting that much out of it now. You're moving into them while you're two down. Um, so you're just going to go down there. Whether or not they had a crab there, whether or not they weren't looking at you directly. I don't think that was necessarily worth it. Let me double check, though. Especially because, like, you position yourself away from your teammate here. Like, they're going in. And they get a trade, which is also not great. Because stagger. Wait, they're a ball point. Why are they that far up? But... That not the point, not the point. Um, the 
main thing here is just like when you go two down, sometimes it's just better to like hold your special and back up and then use it for your team to push back in earlier. Um, that's one of the benefits of like jumping out instead of dying. You, yeah, you still lose your position, but you hold your special and then you come back with your team. If you don't even have to jump out and you just back up, then it's even better than that. Um, but not when you use special in a bad spot. Remember, if you're pushing into the opponent, you're probably not going to be able to shark. Um, it's like, on top right, I saw you were trying to hide from the opponent, but... Uh... Okay. Yeah, and um, another thing is like, yeah, they're comp recognizing um that they have a carbon. Uh, just to double check this, you were on left. Uh, okay, that's what's happening here. So, essentially, you're not really like holding that much of a presence. Like you try to go up in this night, and then you change your mind going to the right side instead. Trying to shark there, because but think you're not going to shark there. Booyah bomb, because they threw a Booyah bomb. So yeah, like, oh, I think change, be changing to right because of the Booyah is fine. But then here, all they have is a ball point. You still have a block there. You can still paint up mid and pressure dropping down. Granted, mm -hmm. you're two down already. So, like, again, is another situation where, like, you're probably going to get snowballed. But you move from right to left. When you don't know what's on left side. That carbon yeah. was sitting there that whole time. So. It's a situation of like. When you move from snipe to right side. That was a lot more committal. I think would have been better. Um, instead of trying to move right. For like. One slosh and then moving left again. Also you have to be wary. Of like right behind the walls. Because that's exactly where the carbon wants to be. They're going to be positioning in spots like this. Because, like, these are just good sharking locations, even aggressively. Um, again, top left, they're already looking at it. They have an Ink Zuko ready, they have an Inkjet ready. I'm assuming both of them are going to be thrown top left. Mm -hmm. They get three shots on you. Look at what's coming out on top left. Look yeah. at where you... Notice where you eventually rotate anyways. Right side. Why not go there initially? Like, yeah, you're probably going to have to have one person on top left so that they actually bait out these specials. But I don't, I don't think you need to necessarily be the person, especially when you have a ball point. Also, um... This is pretty much like Snowball. You've... Your teams went down twice, so like it's going to be very difficult to get back in. That said, you probably want to be moving towards tower before it gets two and one. So like that that's yeah. a minor that's a minor thing though. Um I think like you moved back a little bit too much when it was like ticking down at six or seven. But it's also okay. like the fact that it's getting there already is like eh you're probably losing it anyways. Mm -hmm. Also I didn't know that that hairstyle had like a little thing in the top middle. Neat. Um, sorry, <laughs> but yeah, I hope all that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then like, yeah, so in neutral, try to position a little more aggro. We'll try. Um, and then in disadvantage, you're not going to, you're going to have to like push back in the opponent. So sharking is not going to be great usually. Um, flanks are good. But, like, if you flank, then, like, you're playing with the mindset of it's still beneficial if you're caught out, because then you're able to kite opponents away from the objective. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then, as far as this game, you have a full stop special Booyah Bomb, which is a lot better for stopping tower than Cooler is. Um... I don't think it's a necessarily better special than Cooler right now, but it's still a good special. And you also have Tri-Strike, so. And Inkjet. 
two of them. So you have a lot of entrants. If your ball point's going to, I wonder if ball point could just be set up in mid, because like, if it has to move from this position, then it's going to lose a charge. Okay, you eventually rotate mid, so good. Um, here are your two down again. That's a running problem, but it's not you directly. So yeah. the, the thing this is showing is what you should do when you're two down. Here there's a stamp. Why do you move closer to this stamp when you're two down? I don't know, actually. I don't either. Move away from it. They're using a special to take top left. Give it to them. You are two down. They they kill okay. two people. Don't make it three because you're halfway to be off. And now you're a third of the way to be off. And you'll have it in six seconds. I got something to do. Yeah. Um, so, like, you okay. were trying to you were trying to hold left stack even though you were two down. This is a situation of we are down players. Let's give up left stack and back up. Just play for specials. Play for tower. Because like if you back up and get Booyah bomb, you can just throw it at tower at first checkpoint, and you might not even well. You went two down, so you might lose first checkpoint, but you definitely won't lose second. But now that you're going down here, eh, it's looking maybe. That said, two of them die, so. Here you're able to maybe get in. Okay, you finished the fight. You still have no one on the left side. Um, who were you shooting at? I think I was trying to just paint up more than shoot at anything. What's something that's very important here that is actively shooting at tower? Uh, the mini? Uh, that's a ballpoint. But yeah, um, the splatling that... Oh, okay. Yeah. Especially with ballpoint or like any backline weapon. If they're positioned right under the ledge here, they're an easy target, first of all. Second of all, until they go down or like are forced away, they're just going to continue shooting tower, making it unsafe. You make tower safer not by painting forward, but by eliminating it eliminating opponent presence from tower so like yes there's unpainted sp space directly in front of tower like where you're standing but that's still not as important as getting the ballpoint shots away from tower mm -hmm. and you eventually kill them so like good but I think you could have held the Booyah until, like, you get, um, the top left. So then, like, you could have a, an easier way to get up here. But it was still okay. It helped your teammate on the right side, so I'm not complaining much about it. Good pre-firing. I like that. Um, and then this is a powerful position to hold, so I like, I really like this positioning. The fact that you went in there is really nice, um, because it helped your team a lot. Yeah, I like that. And then you jump in, and it's a snowball from there. So I think, yeah. um, aside from target presence, and um, when you were two down, you still try to hold a very aggressive spot. I feel like you can't do that even more with Forge, as opposed to Tri-Slosher. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, because, like, Forge, if you die, you lose a bomb on tower, which is, like... Yeah. Okay. So I've done that. All right. Um. But yeah. Also, like I've said before, like, yeah, Forge is outclassed, but it's not a bad weapon. Um. So like, I I I don't know if you sent me like a really good Forge clip just so like you can say, hey, well I did really good on that one replay. Um. That said, you did do pretty well in that replay. Um, but I think, like... It's far from a meta option, but if you have, like, a comp that lets you play as a slayer, it's fine. 
Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not something that's, like, going to be, like... It's not, like, Aerospray MG, where it's, like, you don't have a special, you don't... You don't have a main weapon, you barely have a sub. Um, it's, um... Comparatively, it has a good bomb. It has a really good special. The main weapon just has a little bit to be desired. As far as, as, far as like, efficiency or paint control, or maybe even DPS or range. Like, all of them are, like... They are very workable. They're not, like, the best, obviously. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, if you do decide to push forge a bit more, um, I think the main things are just, like, um, that clip didn't show that much, but, like, forge is a slayer. Um, more so than junior, for example. Like, you have to have a mindset of which targets you're or like which space you're getting for your team but instead of getting that space by overwhelming the opponent with paint you're getting that space by uh pressuring them out of those spaces um i hope that makes sense yeah okay and then uh yeah so Uh, that's all of Kelpies, so I'll stay in BC if y'all want, but, like, I'm going to be going to, uh, other team or players, um, battles from here, so. If uh, well, are you still up to do the open thing? Well, so, I'll leave that to you. I'm up to because of... Right just, I, also okay. might, I also might just start packing, though, because I'm going away tomorrow. Gotcha. Um, in that case, uh, I'll see you all from uh, VC at least. Um, thank you all for sending in the replays, and hope to continue coaching all. Thank you for coaching. Is it? Yeah, of course. See ya. Okay. Now we're gonna do this. Um, who was subbing in a div six script? Um, for zones Mako. Playing ballpoint. Okay, so your team has a Tetra. Um, this is a very f high high tempo comp versus their triple special spam, double crab. Uh, with the two crabs, your inkjet's going to be something you might need to low key spam, <laughs> um, just so that you can um, get enough of them to prevent them from getting value out of their crabs specifically. Remember your ball point, not E-Leader. This position gives you a little bit of, like, an awning, but also your Tetris is going to be moving in a lot. Um, and because your team is so fast-paced, um, I wonder if you could just drop down from this position and play a little bit more forward, like, around the block, maybe, instead of a top-right snipe, because you don't have the range to quite deal with a left stack. Um... But if you move to, like, block, then you'd be able to paint all of zone, at least. And maybe get some, like, get opponents from being able to move around freely around zone. Um, something to consider. Because, like, yeah, you drop down eventually. But, yeah. You drop down as your team's, like, lost left stack. And I think they could have um, held that a little bit better um, if you were positioned a bit more aggressively from the start. Good inkjet shot. I think, yeah, playing for inkjet at the start of the game is also very valid of a decision, um, just so that they can't get a crab out. That said, the only concern here is, like, because you just used jet, they're going to crab, and you won't have a jet to deal with it, so. You're also painting a lot with, uh, when you have zone here, but, like, you got three down on them. You could position... Maybe even right stack, or like try to contest that. Um, you could be a lot more aggressive here. Because like here they're able to just throw... They'd be throwing these strikes on left stack anyways, because there's a crab there. 
um if you went on right side then you have a bit more crossfire with a crab and then um you'd be able to prevent them from moving in left side as freely as they are now note that you are two down right now this is a very fair decision i think it should have come out a little bit earlier you were halfway to inkjet um it's going to take a while for you to recharge it and also, as a ball point, you're the anchor of the team. You dying is going to be the hardest death your team will feel. If the Tetris dies here, whatever. They they might get a trade, great. Um, but like they're not playing for their special. They're not really playing for like their position aside from the flanking option. Here, if you're on left stack and they just got zoned and they have two down, they are going to rush the shit out of you. <laughs> I can't really put it any other way. Um, so when when that happens, it's like you need to be ready to back up. And there it seemed like you didn't even have paint behind you for it. Um, I'm not saying to paint that earlier or anything like that. I think the way you tried backing up is good. It's just the timing of it. If you're two down, you might have to give up left stack, just like I said in the last video. Also impressive that your Tetra got the fourth cap there. Probably with Reef Slide. This is the time where you want to position top right for stock. Because it gives you a much more defensive option. Here, they're three down. Yep, just walk forward. The inkjet spot is the main problem here. Um, it's above top right. Um, you, If you're going to use inkjet, make sure you use it from like... Well, if it's that close to cover, then like you can probably use it below there before you get up there. Also, um, you tried getting up a full charge under right stack. Um, if you're going to do that, it shouldn't be to contest top right. It should be to uh, paint up in front on left. Because um, like... Ballpoint excels in flat areas. If you're above top right stack, then yeah, that can be a good position for it. But if you're below it, then the flat area you're looking for is mid. That's that good ink chat shot. Good ink chat shot. <laughs> Alright. Uh, here, the only one alive. I was used to drop roller and using ink jet more aggressively. How? Okay. I agree that inkjet being used aggressively is fine. I'm just saying that, like... Okay, hold on. So, you you initially start here. You get a full charge, which is what I was saying, maybe left side. But then, like, you can inkjet aggressively by starting it from here instead. Like, you basically start at exactly the same spot. Um, it's just that this one is very exposed, while if you use it from below, maybe even the t the opponent wouldn't see where the inkjet started, and then there, there will be questions of, like, where's the inkjet landing? Um, but that's not a question right now, because they can just see it. So, like, the positioning, even, like, where you position the inkjet isn't, it's good, it's just, this is a nitpick. I should have prefaced with that, but... Also, when you do drop roller, um, try to just remember, like, what cover is around you, like, or, like, what things might obstruct it. Like, there you roll to the right. <laughs> but also, that's another net pick. Your teammate's still on under left. You're looking a lot at right stack, even though they seem to be pushing left a lot more. Um, remember, flat areas. Um, Ballpoint would have a lot more pres- er, I think from left stack, you could drop down on left and just look left side instead. And um, if you did that a little bit earlier, maybe uh, the T-Tech would have had a bit more assistance there.
Here you're two down. You back up, but to left stack. Left stack isn't safe if you're two down. They're just going to immediately rush red. So, you back up properly, good. You have two specials here, and you're close in Jed. Against this comp, your inkjet should be used for crab. Um, you can move him with your main weapon here, arguably, once you have the crab out. Because, like, there, you used inkjet first, but, like, you didn't get any picks with it, and you're probably not going to. They're just able to, like, back up for it, and, um, keep that space. And here, now, their specials are coming in. Part of the reason why is they didn't have anything to paint forward while they were in crab. Because you were stuck in inkjet. Um, so sometimes it's better to just, like, hold inkjet while another special is active. In general, it's going to be your um, initiator. But in that situation, it's not. Because if they have a crab now, you don't have anything to counter it. But if they had it... Or if you had inkjet, then that would be how you deal with it. Good trade. Um, there was probably a call out of like they're behind, um, which is why your camera snapped back. Um, I wonder if that's something that you could have been aware of proactively. They come in at around 209. Step up from 218. So the dually could have honestly picked you off from there. Yeah, and this is another situation of like, um, you're looking to the right side, and so I think you're low-key tunnel visioning it. And so you're not really looking at left. Not just in front on left, but also under left on the left breakfast. So it's giving the opponent an opportunity to get a flank in. And yeah, you trade it. But I think um, if you were looking left proactively, it will prevent the Dooley from even getting in that spot in the first place. You're very close to Inkjet. You could just charge it instead of throwing fizzies at it. They are three down. You don't need Inkjet here. Now that they're three down, but like if you were playing for Inkjet, I think it would be fair. See, again, you're sort of just focused right side to the point where your camera's not even looking at left to see what's over there. And only now it sees them when they like start sort of going a bit. Also, I don't know about the targeting there. You focused on the heavy, but arguably the um, player closer to the zone was a bit more of a threat. Because, like, you outrange the heavy, but if they're going to go in with specials especially, or, like, if they're going in with more paint, like, if they outpaint you, that's something to be concerned about. But you outpaint and outrange... Well, you outpaint the heavy in on zone, because, like, you have one move for that, and then your other mode outranges the heavy, so... I don't think it's as much of a concern to uh, force that away as it is to uh, force away like the shooters and give your teammates ways in. Hmm. So there you trade. I don't know if, um, is that a situation where you'd want to jump out? Because, like, if you trade there, it's beneficial for them, right? Like, here they play around the block, and then around this cover. Saying I 
this is a situation where like a call out for your teammates would help a lot. Um, like saying I need help right side would alert classic to know that. Um, since this is a scrim, as you uh, mentioned, so I'm assuming you have voice chat. Teammates are under right. I think holding them back on left side is fine. There. Oh, okay. Another situation where they're flanking left. Um. Let's see. One thing that you never get painted throughout the entire game is bottom, like far left. This Dooley is just able to go there for free. And then they get two from the flank. Um, so you're able to get the pick on that, but I think it's also... Um, like, they've been able to get that flank twice because uh, that paint hasn't been taken. And I think there's... um, As an anchor, as a backline, um, I think there's a decent amount of, like, you have to be aware of the entire map, um, as opposed to, like, yes, pushing right stack is really good on zones, Mako, but it's not the only way the opponent can push from. It's not like Hagglefish, where it's like mid is pretty much it. And if you get mid, if you get their court, then you have it. Um, Mako is a lot more like, there are two ways they can go in from. Um, and so you sort of have to be aware of that. Um, and try to play around, like, knowing if you're leaving one side exposed. Because even though the crab was on top left, you were leaving far left exposed, because the crab wasn't looking at far left, it was looking at mid. So. They're two down, so. You can probably push this. I don't think you even need inkjet here, you could just go in with your main weapon. Again, inkjet for crab could be really helpful. Because you also inject from pretty far back, so most of the time here is just trying to find a target. Um, you you inkjet and then push to forward instead of having like a target with inkjet to push forward with. Or a target to displace. Um, and if you're not displacing anyone with inkjet, then they're, you're not getting nearly as much value out of it. Like, it could be a good habit to like try to start finding a player, like Maybe the heavy. Um, once you find it, or like a splash it once it or splash it once a crab, and then inkjet it um, early when you're pushing in. So then, like, you're at the very least taking them out of the game as well. I think I kept using inkjet because I'm not confident with BP. Um, if you're not confident with BP, I might honestly recommend like as a way to like practice the weapon just like well i was going to say like playing it without even using inkjet at all but no part part of the weapon is like its push condition is inkjet like you can't really separate the weapon from its kit um but uh i think as far as like when to use inkjet um use it with a target in mind don't just use it as like a I'm not confident with hitting this. Well, I think even if like you're not confident in hitting a person with BP, start shooting at them first, or like have an idea of who you want to shoot with BP. Because like if you're wanting to paint, BP does that better than Inkjet, <laughs> or like fizzy bombs do that better than Inkjet. And also here, you used Inkjet, let it run out, and now they have two crabs that you can do nothing about. So I think there was a lot of um, value that you lost from um, Inkjet, and there were a couple of flanks they got on you. Um, furthermore, I think some of the Inkjets you used when like they were too down were a little unnecessary. You could have pushed in without them. And so then when they're pushing back in, you can um, try to target the ones who are most important with Inkjet. Um, and also like targeting them even with your main weapon. Um, I think as far as ballpoint's concerned, just... Um, Uh, 
I think there are a couple calls you could have made to teammates as well of like when to be taking fights. Um, because there were some moments where like they went in um, and weren't really using like the range the ballpoint provided that effectively. But yeah, um, does all that make sense? If you have any questions, let me know. I'm going to get a glass of water. Okay. Good to know. Um, alright, so... Done this. And... Okay, so it seems like the only ones now are from Revelation and then the new ones from uh, Thulium. So, Revelation has two from a pickup. Or two, yeah, two against a pickup, gotcha. Dis, are you on a team, by the way? Oh, five, six, six. WRG seven. Okay. You've been switching around a lot. Um, fair enough, as far as teams are concerned. This is taking a while. What are the games? Stones Museum and then Raymaker Humpback. Raymaker Humpback is always an awkward map to like talk about team wise. It'll probably be more like. I'll have a couple of like individual things for that map, I assume. Since it's it's not flat at all. Uh if you couldn't well, except for like the sides. So like Uh Okay. So this has mostly been a uh set for other teams. Gotcha. Um fair enough. How long were these games? These were both five minute games. Okay, uh... Yeah, so... I just need to give... This Discord... A Discord link to someone for the server. And then...
So both comps you had the same comp, or both games you had the same comp. Um, splash, heavy, stamper, slosher, same as you usually use. Against this comp is a Tetra, Gal, Splash, very aggressive. Um, I'm assuming the Tetra is going to do some stuff on your own spinner that's going to overwhelm you. Uh, since you don't necessarily have a weapon that can deal with that. Um, honestly, the Stamper maybe, but Slosher versus Tetra is going to be a tough matchup. And then Splash sort of just has to burst bomb it out. So, both times it was against Tetras. Okay. Yeah, the, the high tempo of a Tetra comp can be difficult to deal with. So special wise, um, I think the main thing is um, they have an ink chat for your crab. Um, the things you have to deal with their crab are stampers that cast, um, slush rank strike, oppose your own crab, I guess. Um, yeah, Weightbreaker helps a lot against Tetra as well. So. Here, Ace is the only one on the right side. Uh, the fact that no one's with him is a little concerning, because, like, you're all getting distracted by the Tetra here. Yeah, the Tetra... Like, if either the Splash or the Gal drop to mid, they would have mid for free right now, because no one else is contesting it. You're all looking at this Tetra. If it gets a trade here, that means that it got so much value. That Tetra got at least 15 seconds of everyone's time, because not only is it 7 seconds of this Lasha's time, plus however much time it used to uh, stall with the Tetra beforehand. But the Heavy was looking at it, and the Splash was looking at it. And so now Ace has had to give up this really aggressive spot they did have on uh, right side. And now uh, the Gal is able to take over the other side of zone. So I was going to say you could split the map like on left side and right side. So like if B moved forward a little bit and then played from that corner, instead but that's not going to happen with the cow there um which it was only able to get there because b took a while um looking at the tetra if they go far left honestly you could decide to ignore them or like just have the heavy watch it because if the heavy watches the tetra then you're not really having anything like yes you're losing your range to look at like the ballpoint for example um but there's a lot of value in just like having just one person look at it until they start pushing in and then everyone turns around because then you're not spending nearly as much time looking at it because that's what tetra wants you to do it wants you to look at it while it stays alive um so then its teammates can do things Good pick on the gal. He's probably playing for crap here. But I mean, honestly, they're two down. I wonder if... Oh, B was in crab. Okay, that makes sense. Um, here, Inkjet comes out. Really nice pick on Inkjet as well, Ace. Wait, B jumped out. You're still in a really aggressive spot here with Ace. I don't think you need to jump out here. Because, like, you have the heavy watching you as well. Yeah, as soon as that crowd comes out, it's going to be difficult for the heavy to maintain that spot. Okay, good pick. With that, it's probably going to be your opening. Okay. The Tetra just runs up behind the crab. You don't have you don't have the drop uh, cleared yet. Um, like the area right under Toffee. 
Uh, I wonder if that's something that Toffee might want to watch? So someone definitely needs to watch it or have it painted before you crab. Um, as far as who it should be... Let's see. I think Ace going far left is fine. I think it's mainly Hornet. Um, maybe they should be looking behind. Or like looking to um go for right zone instead of uh everyone just focusing left zone because then that leaves right side open for them to uh flank and then just get a free kill on you. Good trade on the Tetra though. So here you have an, a zip cast out, but you're still playing. The slusher, the slusher, and splash are playing further back than the heavy right now. I think you both might be too scared of dying with special. Dingjet gets a pick, and then um. With the zip cast, I think you can just go in with your main weapon, but there's always this question of like, do you go in with your main or do you stay back to crab tank? Um as far as beats concerned, especially now that like the slosher's down. Um It's sort of it's sort of removing the aggression that you would normally have with the crab. Good pick on the gal and good jump. I like that you ain't strike far for far left there, um, and you traded the Tetra, so. Yeah, that's the second time you've died to Crab Toffee. Um, the 90s you have to be aware of. Uh, as a backlink, you can't be getting caught out by those. B, you're sort of giving up a lot of, um, I think by, like, trying to just move around spinner like this. Um, there's a lot of pain on left that you're not really able to get. Are you just... So you were sharking for being able to crab, but... Um, your teammates are all trying to take fights here, so... I don't know if you sharking here is going to be the best play, because they're... They're going in for fights and probably expecting you to be able to contribute in some way for those. Like, the Slosher is distracting on far left as long as it can. Um, the Stamper is trying to go into Spinner and taking a fight because they see that you're on Spinner as well. And then you Shark until they're long dead Crab. And the Crab is going to come out when they're two down, or when you're two down. So I think there's not that much value out of Crabbing here. Because like you could could have probably gotten that pick with your main weapon as well, right? And like you had to use all of your crab just to deal with spinner instead of maybe being being able to get those with a V splash and then using crab tank to get control of mid. Like when when you crab tank you need space around you. Um and there you didn't even have like your spinner painted your color. If it was their color and then they jumped over, fair enough, but it was mostly theirs. Like, Ace had went down on that, on your side, so. Um, yeah. So here strikes come out. No one moves in with a strike because two of you are distracted on left side to, for the Tetra. Ignore the Tetra on left. Just go right. If you have strikes up especially, you can just go in with them instead of um having two people looking at the Tetra and then having a 2v2 on right side, even though you have one down. That said, you get them without dying, but they still distract you for a while here. 
Hornet, you're moving in a bit too far with the whale out. B, you're staying in an aggressive spot when you're alone. It's also partly awareness of, like, if your team is going to be focused on a Tetra on one side of the map, the people on the other side of the map need to be aware, okay, we are playing a 2v3 right now. Even though we have main advantage, we are using that main advantage to deal with a flank instead of um, pushing forward. So, especially when you have a special like Tri-Strike, especially when you have a special like Crab, um, being aware of, are they going to rush me right now? <laughs> Can be helpful um that said i like that you're trying to take aggressive spots when you're in control just remember that your skirmisher in this comp isn't the slosher it's not the slash it's a stamper doesn't mean that you can't be starting fights especially the slosher like that's a weapon where like you probably have qr right now uh yeah you have qr so um it's more of a matter of what sorts of fights are winnable and there are a lot fewer fights that are winnable when you're um alone or only with like one teammate versus when you have like your heavy backing you up and your stamper with you and yourself and maybe one of those specials i don't know how much value this zipcast is going to yep you use zipcast when you're too down zipcast is one of the specials that punishes you the most if you use it and you don't have a at least even main advantage. Because, like, here, B is respawning. Hornet just jumped in. They have only had to deal with the heavy and you as a zip cast. So, like, this is essentially just, like, going in from another angle alone. Because, like, you don't have anyone else trying to create a pincer with you. Also, you try to go in for the ball point. Um, even though it's fully prepared to deal with you here. So you're going to go down to it. B drops down really aggressively, almost gets two, but... Hmm. I think I want to watch that again from Slosh's perspective and B's perspective. Slosher, you're continually getting uh, caught out by the uh, gal. It's continually putting you in these situations. Um... I think as far as um, how to play around it, bait them into your heavy. They're right next to you. Uh... Remember that as a backline, you're going to be the first person they target as a crab. Um, be aware of that. Be aware of how much damage you're taking from the uh, indirects. Because there, they just sent out four of them. I think by the second especially, it's like, they're not going to stop looking at you. Try to find cover. Or even, like, maybe even jumping out. Not sure. Um, but at the very least, like, the bottom left area could be nice to uh, jump out for. I know you just way broke. Honestly, as they're starting to crab, as your zip cast went down, way break might not have been the best play there. <laughs> just holding it for like when you can move back in. B sees the way break, sees the crab that's unsafe, and then drops down for a kill, even though you're three-fourths of the way to crab i like this play just not the circumstances around it um because you're two down is the main thing you're two down and you're close to a special so you can really just like wait this out give them the space that they sort of won oh, sorry about that um so give them the space they sort of won already um and then after that, you can have your crab tank charged and push him with that. Because here, you're just crossfired from three different angles. <laughs> I want to watch this from Tavi's perspective.
Okay, so the Zimcast gets a lot of value there. We have a Crapper uh, Spinner as well as Stress Rates. Good pick on them. Okay. That was a good retake. Um, waiting out the Zipcast and then using all of your specials together. Good. Hornet is going in for the ball point there. I don't know if that was... It's fine. I think this is good. Because, like, you want to be aggressive in this situation. I think the way you be aggressive here is you hug the wall. Um, like, the sort of, like, square or rectangular thing that's like to your right right now instead of um exposing yourself to the ball point for this entire time because then you also were considering dropping down to where they are which would be even yeah it would put you in a worse position because they're probably going to drop out here but if they don't and they try to pick you off then if you drop down for them then yeah. So Ace gets on their spinner. Hornet's sort of just striking in for that. You're able to get a pick for it, which is really nice. Where's B right now? Crabbing. Where's Heavy? Trying to jump over. Good. Good. Hornet's the one that's sort of watching left here. Or supposed to be watching left. Oh, okay, okay. So it... So even though B jumped over with Toffee, Toffee is the one who's going to turn around first. Gotcha. This single flank, both of you dropped down and gave up Spinner for free. Both B and Toffee. You need a sort of like chain of command for who deals with a flank. I think it should probably be Toffee first and then B. But if Hornet's already in mid, then Hornet's the one dealing with it and not B. Because, like, if B just drops down from their spinner here, you're giving them a free crab spot instead of doing what your crab was. Or instead of putting them in a situation where B's crab was earlier in this game, where it's like, well, we could have had a crab on spinner, but then they had two people jump over, and so because there were people on spinner, the crab got less value. Because especially with that pick with the zip cast, that's going to hurt. And then, yeah. A stamper just to wait their shot. Whoops. Yes. Alright. Yeah, stamper um, missed a shot on the uh, toucher jump, and he's going to be last. So I think um you gave up snipe for free, is the main thing. You... Like, yeah, Ace went down, but, like, even if, like, you just wait up there until Ace is able to jump into Spinner, maybe? And then B drops down and deals with the Tetra. The thing is, the Tetra not only got the Heavy's attention and B's attention and both of you off of Spinner, it also just flat out killed the Stamper after it, on respawn, was trying to deal with it as well. So I think there's a lot... Oh, and it killed Toffee with Zipcast. So I think there's a lot of... um. Everyone in the team is trying to deal with the Tetra. I think... There needs to be... Delegation. If there's a flank... Not everyone in the team has to go for it. If you're in a powerful position... It might be better just to hold that. Instead of giving it up to deal with the flank. Granted, some flanks you have to give up space for. But if you have four people in a spot and then the Tetra's behind you, you don't need everyone to give up that spot just for one Tetra behind you. I've also noticed that often... Um, yeah, it falls apart a lot more um, when you're already one down where the Tetra's going in for a flank, and now you're sort of all pressured to look at it. Um, but again, it's a situation of, like... 
if you have a powerful position on like the spinner, then sometimes just like thinking twice before dropping down and giving that up. And also having trust in your teammates that they will be able to uh, pick it off. Um... Let's see. So I think the main thing with that game is the Tetra got a lot of value just from going left um, throughout the course of the game and just forcing you all to look there instead of um, playing from right side. This will be the last VOD review I do today. Um, I've been doing this for almost three hours. Wow. Um... Yeah, I'll I'll try to go through this one quickly. Um I this won't get nearly as much. Um I'm assuming a similar thing happens with the Tetra. Um where this is an even more aggro comp with a shot instead of a splash. Um I won't pause at all. I'll just act as if this is like in game. So here you get pop good. Tetra goes far left and again is trying to deal with Toffee. Um how do you deal with it? Do you ignore it and go right instead? Good. Uh, yeah, Slosher versus Tetra is going to be difficult to fight, so I don't even know if Hornet should be the one looking at Tetra instead of just going forward. Um, B dies at a bad time. Uh, Zipcast. Hmm. I think even though you have a zip pass up there, you're the only one up front heavy, so I think you need to just give up that space instead of going down. Also, um, on, on the far left at the start, I don't know if um, you fighting the Tetra is the best option. If they drop in a trench, you're pretty much just having to give them that spot. Like here again, you try to fight them, but it's your teammates who kill them instead, so. Good pick on the zap. This is a really aggressive spot. I like this from Coffee. Um, the main thing is just, like, teammates need to take advantage of that. You're positioned aggressively on right, but Hornet's trying to force left, and so is B, and both go down for it instead of just going right. You had right side. I don't think you needed to, um, force left. Because, again, if you're pushing Rainmaker right side, then you don't need left at all. And then Ace is just forced in a bad position after that happened. Um, because then they're able to deal with be in Hornet and then deal with Ace. Here, Hornet goes in a bit too early. The Okay, good pick on the Tetra. Uh, here's Disadvantage. You have a Crab up. So, Toffee's focused on mid first. I think that's fair. Just to deal with the ball point. Okay, good retake. And then here, you should be able to pick that off and then Hornet going in from right for the Tetra. Out of ink. Um, as far as adjustments there, um, I think that was just individual mechanics from Hornet. Um, the Tetra was in a spot where I think you could have picked him off. Here you have a zip cast up, good. Uh, B went down, the zip cast also went down. You have a strike. I don't know if you should use all of it right now. Like, you could have just stalled out left side. Because now they have an ink jet and they're just going to pick you off. Also, B panics, goes in instead of just giving them space. And that might be a wipe. Yep. Um. Actually, I lied. We're looking at that again. So here, Ace first says with Zipcast. The thing with these strikes is they can just wait them out. The ball point's going to have ink jets soon. Um, it got it as your tri strikes finished, which means that you won't see it on the top of the screen. But the ball point's been alive for a while, and they're pushing. So it's something you can pretty much expect they're playing for. Like, as soon as those, that ink jet comes out, the shot goes in, the tetra goes in, the zap goes in. They are all waiting for that ink jet. And that's something to expect. Um, they have a Tetra, they're going to rush you down. 
Um, Slosher is a weapon that absolutely despises getting rushed down. You have to position in a way that you're hard to rush down. Um, bait them into your heavy. Bait them into your teammates. Your heavy's positioned really far back. They could not. They physically could not help you with one. Um, so, um, I think trying to bait them into your heavy is a very valid option in disadvantage. In advantage, you're going to be the one creating space. You're going to be like pioneering that new area. So. Good that you picked it before um, a KO, but I think also with the zip cast, uh, there could have been something that was improved with it. Okay, it was just a bomb on rain. Um, this is another situation of like zip cast. You don't necessarily need to be on the opponent. You could just like go behind them and stay at range, um, because then it still forces them to look at you, but then they're not looking. Like, if you go in from this angle, you're going to be where they're already going to be looking for Raymaker. Um, they're already looking in front on left. Because that's where they're going to be pushing rain. So, instead, maybe being on, like, the far left, like, above that area, um, would be really nice to just chill for a bit. Um, alternatively, like, going for the ballpoint specifically, instead of um, Raymaker here. Like, as soon as Raymaker dies, you don't want to be near Pop. Um, because that's a huge amount of area that they'll just get after they pop. Um, or they already have it, so. I think the adjustment here is to use zip cast to instead, um, force them to look back in the mid instead of, a uh, left side. But yeah, this inkjet, they're just going to rush in. Hornet dies first. B also goes down, and then Tetros is just going to rush Toffee, and they get three down. Um, yeah, I wonder if the positioning from uh, Toffee, I wonder if he could have positioned a little bit f more right, um, like near the wall instead. I know that the inkjet was there, um, but at least for the first part of it. Actually, no, I think Toffee, your positioning was fine. It's mostly just um, B and Hornet were a bit too far up. So B dropping down mid with Ace. Just gets lasered by a Tetra, that's unfortunate. Um, Ace, you have to finish off that fight. If if you go to, if you go into a two v one against a Tetra, you can't just let it get away like that. Because now it's just going to take another one v one somewhere else and create a lot more value. And the shot was also there, so they're going to get three for that. Um, if you go in as a two v one, you have to trade out that kill. If you don't get a trade on the Tetra, like if you don't kill them, then that's going to create a huge amount of um, a snowball for the opposing team. So I think also, um, like, last game was a lot about ignoring the Tetra. I think this game is a lot about, like, when you go in for the Tetra, you need to go in for the Tetra. Um, because, like, if you leave it alive, like, in this position, then it's, like, when it's going in for Toffee like that, if no one's there to defend it, then they just got a kill on your anchor for free. So, like, when playing... When playing against a Tetra Toffee, you need to have a lot more awareness of your back and where the Tetra is. If they are flanking, you have to be the one who's looking at it. it even if you're just babysitting it away from your range, it's better than dying to it. Um, and then everyone else also has to have awareness of the Tetra. Um, if possible, try to bait it into Toffee. Um, if that's not possible, then... I don't think Hornet can take a fight against the Tetra alone. Um, I think that matchup's just bad for Slosher. Um, it's possible, but against a good Tetra, it's a lot to ask. So I think um, B and Hornet have to play that as a pair, or like B and or or B and Ace or Ace and Hornet. Ace can sort of chip out the Tetra alone, but 
doesn't especially on a map like this it's not the most consistent thing and like they can just try to bait ace away from doing their job of starting fights so so Here, you don't really have even pain in mid. Um, B tries to take pain in mid, but gets forced out by the Tetra. As soon as Hornet's there, I think B, you need to position a bit more aggressively with Hornet. Uh, you position very passively, while Hornet's still in the aggressive spot, so Hornet might get called out for that later. Yep, Hornet gets called out for it, while B is still in Narnia. Um, yeah, not, not really able to help out with um, the opponents pushing left. Um, if you're going to deal with the Tetra on right, deal with it together. Hornet, don't forget about the Tetra on right or anyone else in mid going for the Raymaker. That was a bit of tunnel visioning. Toffee, you also left yourself a little bit exposed on top left um, when you still didn't have control under yourself. Um, what exactly did you die to, Toffee, though? Let's see. Ink chest out. Ink chest out and Raymaker's looking at you. That's probably enough to just give up snipe and start playing around elbow a bit more. <laughs> then yeah, they're just going to go in for the pick on the splash. Creative reef slider from them, but okay, that's how that's how you should be fighting it. Um, that's how you should be taking fights against the Tetra, waiting out all of their resources, um, like giving them space, and then when you go in for them, you have multiple people go for them at once. Uh, like here, you waited out the resource by backing up for it, and then immediately Ace and Hornet went in for the Tetra. That's how you should be properly dealing with it. And then here, Ace goes in without pain. Um, it's a little bit of a tunnel vision, but you don't get punished for it, so. Hornet tries to follow up. B is very slow in getting them at Toffee get trade. Also, I like that B was around Toffee there. Um, B's not around Hornet though, so when Hornet goes down, they'll want to trade off. Hornet, when you go in, um, well, actually, there's the difference in tempo between how Hornet's playing and how B is playing. Hornet's playing very aggressively and B's playing very passive. I think B's a bit too scared of going down without being able to support Hornet. But what that's doing is the exact opposite, where now Hornet's going in, expecting follow-up, or like maybe going in a bit too far because like they don't have any pain around them. Um I think you will need to work a little bit more as a unit because your weapons function very well around each other. The Splash paints for the slosher what starts fights that the Splash can finish off. Um, and you both have chip damage around each other. So I think there's a lot there that if one of you, if you're separated in the map, then you need to be paired with each other. Like, you need to be paired with other weapons. Like, if the slosher isn't with a Splash, you have to be near the Stamper. Um, and B, I think, I think out of anyone in this comp, um, B is probably the one who will be watching the heavy the most, but I think um, there needs to be a bit more like glue between the heavy and the splash, the splash and the slosher, the, especially the slash, splash and the slosher. Like that's the most important one. I feel like the glue between Ace and Hornet, the stamper and the slosher, is okay right now. Um, and I think that there are a lot of situations where the stamper and the heavy are sort of just doing different things on different parts of the map. But I think there's a lot to be desired with, like, Toffee watching flanks more, especially against the Tetra comp, and um, playing a bit more together as a Splash and Slosher pair. The thing Tetra wants to do is it wants to take 1v1s. If it takes a 1v2, it's going to die. It wants to peel people away from their teammates, and then um, deal with them one by one. And so you have to be a lot more proactive about teammate awareness and where you're going as a pair. Like here, you're both sort of in mid, 
but Hornet's trying to start fights on right side while B's playing a lot more passive in mid. Um, or I guess safe in mid. Not exactly passive, but it's the same outcome, right? Because Hornet's leaving themselves exposed to the ball point while B's um, not. And so while B stays alive here, um, there's not... I think there was a bit that you could have gotten with um, B supporting Hornet as you tried to rush the ball point. Um, but also, like, do you really want to be rushing a ball point in neutral? I think you probably want um, strikes for that or crab. So I think in this situation, it's probably better to just get very safe control. Like, yes, it's 30 seconds left, but if you go down and then they get jet ready, that's going to mean you lose mid. <laughs> also, this map has, like, two spots for crab if you're trying to get mid with it. And both of them sort of take a while if you're not already positioned there. Um, so, like, I think there's a little bit lost from, like, be having to reposition fully to get a crab that's then just shot down by one shot of an inkjet. Honestly, I have to wonder. I have to wonder. What if B tried out Zap for a couple of games? Because, like, you'd have Cooler, which would help with a lot of these fights um, that, like, the Slosh is trying to go in aggressively for, and then the Zap's already using Cooler, so, like, you want to go in with that. So then you're getting aggressive paint. Um, and then it's also a safety net against Inkjet instead of being a special that's absolutely countered by Inkjet. It also helps against Tetra, because then if you trade it, then you're back before the Tetra, even if it gets QR. Um, and then... Zap also just has like a lot more fighting power and a bit more range, so it might be able to get pain a bit further forward. So here in advantage, Toffee and Hornet get good picks. That way Breaker's a little bit uh, further back than probably wanted. Uh, that's a bit too risky. Well, yeah, of course it's going to be risky. It's trying to push for KO. Okay. And then inning Suka. Um Notice how they just gave you a lot of space there and then waited for them to get specials and then just popped Inksuka and got you. I think if you just give them a lot of space. Well, you can give them space if like you're two down or in disadvantage. And then play for your special. Um on Raymaker. I think you were all trying to panic in your disadvantage. Granted, they had they won the game unless they got KO'd, so they had the leniency to do that. But it's still something to consider. Um, I think as far as adjustments um, against Tetra comps, um, Hornet and B need to play around each other a lot more. Ace zip casts um, when playing against like a ball point or a, yeah, ball point was in both of these. Um, make sure that like your zip casts are getting value by staying alive. Um, I think if you're able to like get the ball point to look behind it, then you're still creating leagues of value for your team. And then um, finally with um, the heavy, there were just some moments where you were getting flanked, you were getting crab shot. Um, I think that's leaving a little bit of... Um, area that the opponent can expose with um like i like that you're being aggressive with heavy but you still need out of anyone in the team you're the one who needs to watch the team's backs um and you're having similar deaths to like uh in this game like the stamper and also in this game similar deaths to the stamper um so i think there are a lot of situations where you're getting called out um and that's creating a lot of opportunities for the opponent. Okay, so I hope that helps Revelation. Um, know that you can always ping me in your server if you need. Um, yeah, 
So that should be that. Okay. Overall, this has been a really nice coaching session. I've done pretty much everything in coaching requests until what was given yesterday. So, really happy about that. Um, my throat is dry, my stomach is empty, and I'm realizing I've been speaking at negative 10 decibels. I hope that has been okay. Um, but yeah. I should be getting a stream overlay relatively soon, so that's really exciting. Um, you're doing SOS later, get food and water. Uh, depends on if three teams drop or not. I am getting water especially. Thinking of cooking like fried rice or something, I don't know. Uh, I'll have the bot of this up by tonight and I'll post it, post it in uh, coaching announcements. I should have relatively accurate timestamps. If you notice they're inaccurate, let me know. Okay, um, thank you all again for letting me coach, um, for watching if you tuned in for at least a little bit of time, or if you're just watching this after, uh, for your VOD, for your cool silly team that wants to get better, um, or cool silly individual who wants to, uh, you know, grind the game, play it for about 20% of the past nine months. I am still not over that. <laughs> um, a friend of mine calculated how much I played Splatoon over like the number of hours that had been since Splatoon released, and yeah, 20%. <sighs> uh, but yeah. That's that. Have a good one.